show. Got lots of stuff to look at. Lots of porn. Oh, I'm excited. You know? Oh, shit, we're live. <laughs> okay, so hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Plastic Fanatics, the late night after guest. I am your host, Victory Saber 77. Oh, I heard a ding. Um, good show for you tonight. Um, we do have a blast from the past. Again, I will put the link in the description if you want to bypass all the news and um, C dub stuff because, you know, I, I get it. But um, it will be in the um, description. And we're going to be taking a look at Thundercats, the 2011 series. I'll also put a link in the description for the original 80, when did it come out? 85, I think, um, Thundercats. And so um, if you can take a look at that, too, where we go over the cartoon characters and the toys. And we'll be doing the same for the 2011 series. So get into some introductions and some hauls. So starting off first is our the Brink Mites. What's up, man? What's up? Yo, 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 yo. What's up, guys? How you guys doing? You look, I got my display up finally. No, I know. Finally. Damn, it's nice. Yeah, I tell you, man, it's been it's been it's been a long road, but I'm finally here and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. That's cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Awesome. But uh, yeah, but in all seriousness, I'm just here hanging out the uh, the the Casa de Dust. Cool. We had a uh, toy con meetup in Jersey today. Um, good times. Had uh, a good showing from the realm, about like ten or eleven people. Cool. Um, and uh, we were all going to go see Thor, but instead we came over to Dust House, had some pizza, sat and chat. It's good times. Ah, uh, you had your own Ragnarok. Yeah, damn nice. right. Cool. Um, yeah. Is this the first Toy Con? Or Toy, yeah. For this like, is this big gathering? Um, we've, for, for this big, for sure. But uh, we've, we've had, uh, the last one we had last summer was pretty big. That's where we met uh, G Money. Uh, Gary, and uh, that's where we met uh, EE Prime for the first time. And uh, this time uh, we had the uh, Ralph the Vendetta came, and we had uh, Andrew Gort and Gary, Energon Attic, Eric and BX, uh, Big Dom, Dust, myself. Cool. Um, I'm sure I'm missing some. Oh, Bricks on the Dollar was there, of course. Uh, he and Energon Addict had a wing eating contest, and it was won by Dave. I think uh, uh, Bricks was taken by surprise. Uh, he thought his wing game was strong, but uh, Dave just came out of the gate. I think he kind of hustled him there. Yeah, at least he came in second place. Yep. And uh, no one invited him, but Chuck also showed up as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it was good times, good times. Good. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to go to a toy show and not pick up something. Oh. So, um, one of the things I got there was uh, they have some old interesting stuff. Uh, Jamie, you saw I sent you. They had like a vintage, what was it, something? Oh, the Chagokin um, God Mars? Yeah. Yes, that was nice. You picked that up? I did, I did not, oh. though I was tempted. My, uh, my phones are a little slim here this time of year. But uh, I did pick up this. I found this. This was uh, I picked this oh. up for Mickey. For Brave, nice. Uh, this is a toy I had as a kid. It's one he has a, as a as a kid as a kid, and I just remember like two years ago in a post we saw pieces of one, and he couldn't remember what it was, and I just happened to see it there. So, yep, I picked that up for him. I had that, um, and I got the Solo Chikokin version of that. Oh, I saw some really nice versions of that character for sure. Yeah, and um, I picked up my uh, 40th anniversary Luke, my farm boy Luke. Nice. Which completes the set for me. Um, I'm still waiting for delivery on wave two. I was going to meet up with Ronan uh, Kaufman today, but he couldn't make it to the show. So I'll just ship them to me instead. Mm. Um, they did have a Star Wars Celebration X Wing pilot, Luke. Ooh. Which, <laughs> now that I'm complete, I'm close. Um, but, uh, you know, it was going for 175. It's not for that. Too bad. Yeah, I've seen them going for like 225, 250, and I was like, yeah. hmm. So I don't know. It is a two day show, yeah. and I'm still in the area. So I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but I also picked up 
a few things. The four horsemen were, th were there. The guys who oh, do cool. the sculpts for uh, the He-Man classic series and the Filmation yep. series. And uh, they had a bunch of their original stuff there. These Mythic Legions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, those are cool. Oh, my God, man. I saw these in person, and I just couldn't leave the table. So after we did lunch, I made sure to go back. It's like, I'm going to pick up a few. I was going to pick up two. I ended up picking up three. So this is a blue bird type guy, which is pretty pick cool. Pick up the rooster. Uh, I did not. But, I was oh. like, oh. um, but uh, yeah, I picked up a this uh, purple dragon guy. Oh, this cool. You know, whatever the uh, reflection from the screen is getting all in these cases. And also, I picked up this guy looked like a red parrot. And, oh, that's uh, cool. Um, I have some sort of weird and nostalgic feels for a red McCall parrot. I'll talk more about that. I think on Monday show, so I have something to talk about. Nice. Um, but in the mail, I got a few things as well. Um, someone in the cafe was selling the Iron Factory Seekers. The uh, original three, Skywarp, Thundercracker, and Starscream for a good price. So I picked those up. Cool. And uh, Make Toys, a uh, Guardian, Guardia, whatever their defensor is. Oh, yeah, yeah. So someone had that for a good price as well. And uh, he's he was, I was going to wait for Black Friday for him because uh, I picked up Quantron last year for a good price. And uh, But he's been scarce. So I figured I might as well jump on it now because he... They might not have a Black Friday sale for him. So that completes my combiners at that scale. Um, I just swiped out the combiner wars that I had for him. And, oh, okay, uh, I was wondering if you had the combiner wars versions. Yeah, I was cool. thinking about just getting an upgrade for C-Dub, but I was afraid it would make him too tall compared to the others. So this guy fits in perfectly. All right. So, nice. Yeah, yeah cool. good week. Yeah. yeah, nice haul. And as far as those... um. Four Horsemen figures, those are what? Like a seven-inch scale, right? They fit kind of with your classics, or are they... Yeah, they're, they're, they definitely look taller than six-inch for sure. Okay. Um, and But they're like mutants, so that's kind of... They're like off-landers, you know? The, so I think yeah. they'll fit with my six-inch stuff that I do have. So awesome. Kinda, yeah. Cool. All right. Up next... Rammer, Mr. Green, Nick, how you doing? What's up, man? Doing well. How you good. been? Good. Good, good. What'd you get this week? Uh, I picked up a couple of Marvel Legends to try and fill my X-Men shelf. It's mostly selects. It's not going well. Uh, like The scale's way too much out of like sync. Hmm. I picked up uh, Havoc, Shadow Cat, Nice Man. And uh, I picked up some DC figures, too. I got uh, the DC Essential Batgirl, and I got uh, the DC Essential Wonder Woman, and um, the old school Alex Ross Justice figures. I got the uh, I got Parasite and Brainiac. Nice. Nice. Hey, uh, hey, Bram, uh, Dust wants to know what's going on with your mustache there. What is? Uh, got a lay nose. There you go. Is it like <laughs> bad head for your mustache kind of thing? Probably. I need to wax that sucker. Yeah. Uh, I just let mine go anywhere. I just whatever. Yeah, let's throw some Rogaine on pretty it. Pretty much it. And, th and that's the thing. Like I was, I was telling Jane before we started broadcasting. For whatever reason, like Hangouts is so screwed on my phone. Like the only re the only thing I can do, like to see myself or anything, I have to have the fucking show on YouTube on my TV in front of me. So there's like a 20 second delay. Oh, cool. Uh, so all I can see on my phone while we're talking is my fucking uh, cup. Yeah. I have guitar. All right. Cool. So you're going to be chiming in late on these screen grabs. <laughs> yeah, I do all the time. That depth perception going to come in and be like, so are we talking? No, we're already past that. Ah, <laughs> All right, cool. Anything else for you? Nah, man. Pretty light. All right. All right, I'm hoping. We're almost 15 minutes into the show. No trends, though. Dang it. It should be soon. Um, all right. Uh, Charles will be back next week. Um, again. Thoughts and prayers goes out to you, man. 
uh, uh, we know what's going on. So look forward to having you back next week. And come on, Trent's going here. Um, as for me, um, I didn't get anything this week besides um, my daughter had a birthday, which was cool. And then I, I got to go see Chris Brooks. So, oh, yeah. And, uh, Trisha Yearwood. Dude, did he play the Honky Tonk Bar Association? No. Oh. No, I'm sorry. Um, Friends in Low Places? Place? Yeah. Um, Thunder Sweet. Rolls. He played He played some new stuff, but he also played some covers, you know, of other, you know, people and all that type of stuff. I mean, it was, it was a good concert. I've always had fun for some odd reason. I'm not a huge country fan, but I've, I've always had fun um, at country concerts. Um, I know Faith Hill and Tim McGraw are going to be coming in to town sometime, I think next year, maybe, I don't know. Um, and I went to their concert when they first came here too. That was fun, but, um, it, it kind of sucked. The, the entire show has been sold out and he's here for four days. He's here till Tuesday and, um, or yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Oh, he's here for a little bit longer, but he only has like, I think four or six shows, something like that, but they're all sold out. And it was funny that we missed it by one day to get into the live recording for a um, DVD special, unfortunately. But it was All cool. Right. I, I enjoyed it, though. Um, Did you do fun. any of the Chris Gaines stuff? And you just asked me the questions. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think so. No? No. No, I was, I was um, just curious. Um, what, did he do? what else did he do? And again, I'm not a huge. I mean, I know he did the he did the dance. I'm familiar with that one. Mm. Um, uh, Thunder Rolls. I'm I'm familiar with that one. He did a duet with his wife. Um, and we had some gal perform before her before him, which was part of his kind of entourage. When I tried, I didn't know who she was. So what about uh, but it was fun. Going, yeah, cool. What about was, ink going down to the sun comes up? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. He did do that one, two pina coladas, you know, you know, all this crap. So it was nice. Um, and it was fun. I, and I didn't know, you know, it's like, wow, he's here till Tuesday, which is kind of like, it'd be kind of cool to meet up with him somewhere. Like, hey, look, he's in Best Buy. Um, the only person I saw at Best Buy once was like Samuel Jackson when he was here in town. So, um, I don't know. Come on, Trent, where the hell are you? <laughs> Can't ad lib any longer. Uh, oh, well, all right, so. All right, let's get into some screen sharing. Yeah, it in. All right. So, it's like, I could just be trans. What's up, fellas? <laughs> I'll do it. Um, here we go. Screen share. So you can see um, my thumbnail. You correct? Nope. All right, cool. Yep. Episode 148. Obviously, we're looking at Thundercats 2011. I'll have the link in the description. So there we go. Shoutouts to the Cool Table Network. Check out the Facebook page. And check out all the like-minded podcasts that give you everything in, that you need for your collecting desires and habits and everything else. But we are comprised of Enter the Realm, ROC Hangout, Figure Banging, Stasis Lock, Information Creep, uh, Shattercast Uncut, Nerd Rage Radio, Toy Detox, Eight Weeks, Beers and Bolters, 40K. Um, and then we have a new show, which comes on Bricks on the Dollars YouTube channel. Hosted by him. Also, he has Paul C. and Iron Claw. And it usually um, drops Friday morning, I believe. But it's building up to. It's a Lego podcast. So there you go. Very um, interesting. I enjoyed last week's episode. Yeah, me too. Cool. So I um, actually, I'm, I think I'm one behind now, but I'm looking forward to listening to that on the way home tomorrow. So yeah, um, yeah, definitely check out all the all this the uh, podcasts and the Cool Table Network. Whether you're watching on YouTube or on iTunes or whatever it is. Remember to like, subscribe, five-star ratings, all that type of stuff is, what does Dust say? Titty smack that like button? That's right. All right, so there you go. I should make it yes for that. But I don't know, probably too offensive. All right, Um. up next, you want some ROC merchandise? We'll head over to the Realm of Collectors 
web page. Um, it's www.realmacollectors.com. You can pre-order your zip-up or pullover hoodie. He's enjoying your commentary on how to how how to uh, do the like button. Oh yeah, there you go. So, um, go over there, pre-order your zip-up pullover, um, whichever one. Get both of them if you like. Um, Fifty-five dollars a piece, shipped in the United States. Even if you're international, we'll um, we'll hook you up. But you have until the seventeenth to pre-order to lock in your hoodie. So um, get over there and um, get one. Also, yeah. for those of you calendar challenge, that's see, six more days you have. Yeah, six more days. It is a Friday next Friday. So uh, get her done. Um, ROC shot glasses are still available, two for 13 shipped. Also, the friends and family t shirt by Energon Addict, $30 shipped in the US. I believe he did he do a Facebook post yet about sizes, current sizes that are available? But if not, he will have one probably in the ROC Facebook group. Yep. So, um, again, all that merch you can find over at the www.realmacollectors.com web site. Also, there's blogs and other stuff over there. So, I mean, come on. Go check it out. All right. Crappy Riding, AKC Dub. Here we go. We love it. So, we got Supergirl. We have The Flash. We have DC Legends of Tomorrow. We have Arrow here. So, really, um, Supergirl is still going. Yep. Um, good news, I guess. If you are a Legion of Superheroes fan, they're starting to kind of ramp that up a little bit. We have Jesse Rath here. He's going to be playing Brainiac 5. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we get a little bit of an origin story this coming uh, Monday uh, with Kara and Alex. And so that should be pretty good too. Uh, moving to Flash. <sighs> this is just fucked up. Um, Elongated Man is finally going to get a costume. And that's it right there. <laughs> I, I don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, it's it's sad. So, Jane, like when you get these screen grabs for C Dub, they almost look like like picks from the set. But is this yes. actually like from the show? Yes. <laughs> this is yeah. These yeah. It's pretty bad. I mean, I'll describe it to the iTunes listeners or to the you know just the listeners. It's um. Elongated man is in a jumpsuit type. Uh, what is that like? A really, I don't know, a, a slate gray, maybe. I don't know, bluish gray. Yep. And then he's wearing a mask with eye holes, basically a rag over his head um, to cover his nose and eyes. But he's got the holes cut out so that he can see through it, and it's tied in the back. So I, I don't know. It's pretty sad. That Cisco, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming Cisco may have, he created this um, new fabric so it will be able to stretch along with him. But man, um, I, thought, I, thought, oh man, I thought the Fantastic Four outfits were kind of, yeah, this is pretty bad. So it's not even Ralph Dibney? No, it is Ralph Dibney. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're straying kind of away from the character in the comic books as far as the look for now i don't i don't know what they're going to be doing but um you got that going on it's like dingy white like when you don't bleach your whites yeah that's the color yeah so. and if you watch dc legends of tomorrow um damian dark's back um so the whole vampire thing was not about vampires it was about a dude that had a two-prong needle <laughs> That they were extracting blood from to resurrect Damien Dark. So we, um, Rip Hunter now has been arrested by his own organization. He is basically he called the legends, I believe, last season like just essential fuck ups. Well, he's turned out to be the the major um, fuck up <laughs> out of both groups. No one trusts him anymore, and he's kind of paranoid and such. But you got that going. Arrow got a little bit better because we got the return of Deathstroke, Slade Wilson here. He wanted the help. He needed the help of Oliver Queen to get his son back. Um, unfortunately, 
Oliver got bad news that his son was supposedly killed. So that put Deathstroke into a mood and he wanted to go kill some people. So we got to see a really cool, we got to see Deathstroke back in action um, like he was in season two. And so this cool. guy, he's only got one eye? Yes. Lead? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not familiar, but so I got to ask, like, do they talk about how he compensates for depth perception or? Um, not really. Yeah, I'm just kind of curious about stuff like that. Slade Wilson's abilities are to use, what, 100% capacity of the brain. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's why he, he's like the best at pretty much everything. Um, besides having some regenerative probably properties and some other stuff. But yeah, um, he's a badass. And so yeah. is his costume. Yeah, I know. His costume's pretty badass, too. <laughs> I like it. And he, I mean, he was kicking ass. I mean, there was like the whole scene of him breaking into this facility. He was just stabbing, shooting, just going crazy. We got to see Oliver get into some action a little bit, but he did not. Um, he didn't get a bow and arrow, unfortunately. That kind of sucked, unfortunately. Um, we did meet up with his son. His son is actually alive and kicking. He's actually in charge of the group that Deathstroke was out to kill. He's. I forgot what they call him. I think they called him Jackals. I'm not sure. Um, is it is it Jericho or? They we don't know yet. Okay. Um, it could be. It could not be. Who knows? I mean, Jericho is able to. His powers are to leap into other people's bodies, yeah. and such, and take over. Um, but we we don't know. Um, this sucked ass. Vigilante's back. We got Vigilante. Awesome. I thought, okay, cool. We found out who Vigilante is. And uh, we all know that in the comic books, Adrian Chase is a form uh, like, there's so many different Vigilantes, but Adrian Chase was Vigilante in the comic books. Unfortunately, last season, we saw that Adrian Chase was Prometheus. So that's like, what the hell? We get Vigilante back here. He takes on Black Canary. Black Canary pretty much Sonic screams his mask right off and finds out that's her old partner that supposedly was killed but was not killed. He has regenerative powers, so he's got a healing factor. So, I don't know where they're going with that. And it, it, it was just very anticlimactic. It's like, oh, okay. And he's just doing this because they couldn't get anything done as cops, so he's like, you know what, I'm just going to you know, become a Punisher character, which sucks. I do like the fact that on Arrow, we got to see, was it Arrow? Or maybe it was on Flash. It was Flash that someone said something about um, Felicity, or not Felicity, yeah, Felicity told the girls because they had a bachelorette party when um, Caitlin turned into Killer Frost. It's like, oh my God, you're like, you're like the Incredible Hulk. Got a kick out of that, that they mentioned a Marvel property. That's funny. <laughs> All right. Oh, I hear Trent's. That's him. Don't be What's up, shy, fellas? Man. How you doing? What's up, man? Hey, sorry I'm late. Sorry I'm no, late. that's okay. Just but... I'm just glad you showed up, man. All Always right. a pleasure. Up next, uh, we found out that um, Whitworth Miller here is no longer being um, under contract. He's going to fulfill what he has to do for his upcoming roles. As Captain Cold, he's also going to be Citizen Cold in the new crossover. But after that, he is out, unfortunately. So they're doing Flashpoint in the Flash show, and they're doing a Flashpoint movie. Ah, uh, there he did Flashpoint. That was last week. That was last year. Oh, so why is he going to be Citizen Cold? What is it? Red this is Sun, a crossover. Or? It's a crossover. It's the Citizen Cold character came from the comic book Flashpoint. All right. Oh, okay. But this is for Crisis on Earth X. Oh. So Iris and Barry are finally going to get married in two weeks, and we're gonna. That's how we're gonna start this whole crossover crap. So for four um four um episodes. So that's what you get. Um, all we know is that a major Flash villain is going to be coming back. Most likely that we see right here, it's uh, Thawne. 
even though this is comic books and stuff, but um, just because we got Damian Dark back, and that was part of the DC Legends. If you remember last year's DC Legends, it was um, uh, Damian Dark, Merlin, and Thawn. So who knows? But as you see down here, new character. We're getting the Ray. Ah, oh, that's cool. So he is part of the CW Seed Network um, with like Vixen and their animated series. But he's actually going to be in the live action show. And he is going to be portrayed by Russell Tovey. Tovey. I don't know. I suck at names, but there you go. That's the actor. Oh, cool. So we'll see what happens there. Nice. So that's the major crossover. Starts in two weeks. We'll see what happens. So, all right. Injustice 2. Found out the turtles are going to be in there. Yeah. My okay. son started begging for it as soon as he saw the turtle reveal. I thought that was pretty cool. And this was interesting. Hyatt Toys. We've seen their stuff as, as far as like their alien and predator toys. They got the rights to do three and three quarter inch figures. Hmm. They were the ones that did like that really expensive uh, alien vehicle, right? The APC, yeah. They had all the electronics and shit in there, yeah. So yeah, they're doing an Injustice um, toy line. Which is interesting. I don't know what the price point is, but most of that alien predator stuff is in like the thirty dollar range, I believe. Um, could be wrong. Go check it out. But um, three and three quarter inch again. So these are smaller. So I I have no idea. I don't even know if this is why, but they're doing it. So there you go. All right, we talked about this on ETR, Walt Disney, and Fox. Um, Walt Disney wanting to buy out <clears throat> Fox. Um, Fox would just go into sports and news and then everything else uh, floats over to Disney and such. Interesting, to say the least. Um, like what we talked about on ETR, Marvel properties. Yeah. How do you guys so, feel about it? Well, it would mean that Marvel would have the rights to almost all their characters again. There's still a, there's still a few rights out there like they can't do a Hulk uh, solo movie or a Namor solo so, solo movie. Oh, still, you e even after this, like they can't even use Namor. Like those rights were sold to Universal before the Hulk, and it's some weird deal. The sad thing is, no one we haven't even heard of anything that deals with Namor. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's it's interesting to me. So, uh, just yeah. Walt Disney getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, I heard. I heard that the main reason, besides the Marvel stuff, is that there's some rights that 21st Century Fox still has for Star Wars stuff that Disney doesn't have. Mm. Maybe like original trilogy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Sound. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Scores. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's cool that they're trying to acquire all this. Yep. And. Um, yeah. And it makes sense, and we'll see. Um, yeah, but I think mainly it was, it was Fox is basically saying, "Look, we can't compete on the, the the main media level like some of these other companies are." So yeah, they just want to focus on their other sports and news and and other broadcast stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, you think about what Disney has, not just with. Um, you know, with Marvel or Star Wars, I mean, Miramax, other studios, all this type of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Oh, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the show, um, I'm hoping you guys have your legal team in place. I have mine just in case I get accused for any inappropriateness. Um, I know that's a yeah. theme, it seems like now. <laughs> um, so I got my legal team in gear just in case. If you don't like it, take a knee. I don't really care. Um, oh, so. sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the Louis C.K., route i did it oh well <laughs> <laughs> but i saw a lot of that stuff and i forgot to mention like the guy who um, i think is a writer or something for the c dub dc stuff is now being accused oh. of stuff um someone on the x-men the director from one of the x-men movies is being accused i mean damn brett this ratner is, this is just like what the fuck everyone it's Why? like brett it's ratner. like hey if they're gonna come <laughs> out, i'm gonna do it too and I'm then the Brian Singer. Spacey. 
Then the Brian Singer rumors are coming all back. Nice. Yep. Yeah, it's just like what the hell. I mean, I it's it's horrible the situation. If you know truth and all that comes out to you know, okay. But man, it's just kind of a coinky dink how it's all just coming out now. Yeah. I like the Charlie Sheen, uh, Corey Ham story. That yeah, was <laughs> you know, some and, of suppo- and suppose supposedly like Corey Haim wasn't the only person on the set of Lucas that Charlie Sheen went after. Yeah, that's I don't know. He okay. was just <laughs> slinging dick all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> some magical world. Yes. All right, moving on to Hasbro Mattel. Hasbro is uh, getting ballsy too, going after Mattel. I um, saw that. I, saw, I didn't haven't read an article uh, yet, but uh, I did see the headline. Um, really, it's been like. Rumorville for years, but now it's come out again where you know Hasbro is just kicking their ass, and as far as just revenue, and I mean, what does Mattel have? They have the WWE license, they have Barbie, uh, DC, oh, Hot Wheels, Multiverse. That's about it. Well, they have yeah. rights that they have rights that like for stuff for stuff like they have rights to Ghostbuster toys and shit like that too. Mm-hmm. But it just seems that it makes sense. Hopefully, it does happen because Mattel, to me, is just failing. Um, I just, I mean, you can see the quality in their stuff, and just, yeah. I don't know. It just, it's going to be trickling down. To, but it, also, though, it'd be weird to have Hasbro having Marvel and DC. Um, yeah. Putting effort into like some movies, I, I don't know how that's going to go with Hasbro Studios. Well, hell, it, it's not going to make their DC figures. Yeah. So, what'd you say, Brian? So it's not going to make the Transformers any better. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, no. But who knows? All right, that's about it for that. Um, you can go more in depth with that. I mean, it's. Right now, it's it's rumors. I mean, nothing's concrete. But um, I thought this was pretty cool. Star Wars New Hope original motion picture soundtrack, 40th anniversary, 3 LP collector edition. I thought that was pretty badass. If wow. You know, that is nice. 40th anniversary. No, good question for you guys. Yes. Um, if you are connoisseurs of the Star Wars soundtracks, um, I own for the, the first six movies or whatever. Um. To me, A New Hope still is my favorite out of all of them with just select tracks from the, from the others. You know what I mean? Just wondering if you guys had a favorite. Oh, I like Return of the Jedi, especially the original celebration song. But The uh, Yub Nub? Yub Nub? Yub Nub. <laughs> the, only, the only things I ever listened to were the Imperial March and Duel of the Fates. Oh, yeah. So uh, the one I've always been from Empire and uh, Episode 1. Yeah. I love Enter the Trap from uh, Return of the Jedi, the Battle of Endor. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I do. I would agree with you, Brian. I do like A New Hope. It resonates more nostalgia with me because of the. It just. Everything fit really yeah. well. And it was something new. I was like, you know, it started it all off for me. It's like, this is the introduction of these characters, the music, everything, just like, yeah. it's so empowering. Yeah. But I do. You know. I do like for some stupid reason when Darth Maul shows up in episode one and they're like, like, all right, this music starts. I'm like, all right, ding, 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 ding. I'm like, yep. let's do it. It's on yep. fight, yep. you know, but other than that, yeah. Do you have more music news, James? Music news? Yeah. Uh, no, I usually just do toys and. Uh, well, no, the reason why I was asking is because Danny Elfman is doing the soundtrack for the Justice League movie, and he said oh. that his original Batman theme is going to be in the movie. Oh, really? That was, really? That was okay. in one yeah. of the trailers, right? I think that was in one of the recent trailers. Or yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Sorry to sidetrack. Uh, no, I no, just thought it was cool. interesting. Oh, it is interesting. Any of you going to be seeing Justice League next week? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I plan yeah. to. The I hope so. Crowded. <laughs> Dope. All right. I haven't I been know. to a movie since Doctor Strange, and hopefully we're going to Ragnarok tomorrow. Ragnarok. Cool. Yeah, you'll like it. You'll love Ragnarok. Yeah. I don't know. I gave it a six, but that's... I'm a, 
I'm an asshole. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, this is more up my alley. Um, we are getting the Japanese fight uh, super robot life form. Basically, this is the G1 cartoon in Japan. So the first two seasons is fight super robot life forms, and then the sec the third season is Transformers 2010. Um, this is the first time that it's going to be readily available in this box set that's actually affordable. Most of the time, um, if you are a collector of this back in the day from Pioneer and stuff, this shit was expensive um, to so, acquire. So this is different than like the American G1? Um, slightly. Just basically storytelling. Character. Oh, okay. some, some characters, but it's mainly it's just storytelling. A little bit of storytelling, but the character names are going to be different. They're going to be like Lambor. They're going to be Liger. They're going to be Convoy. That type of stuff. Okay. I like that. <clears throat> Granted, the, the one here in the States came out first and everything, but it's kind of cool to see what they were building up and then going straight into Headmasters, Master Force Zone, you know, all that type of stuff, and then Scramble City in between. Yeah, so yeah that's what, if Scramble that's what City I was going to be tossed in here. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. That's sweet then. And this is all Blu ray also. So that's, that's pretty nice. Damn. All right. So that's just the first season that they plan on. You say they plan on doing a victory and such? Um, I don't know if they're doing that. I just know they're doing the f the original. The original? Okay. The original three. Season three. Is this from Shout Factory or? No, this is from overseas. This oh, is from right. Universal. All right. <laughs> no, I wouldn't trust Shout Factory. Yeah. So, but yeah, there's the uh, box that's. And such so oh, nice I, would, I would love i would love to get some kind of weird parody dub of it uh, just, you know, like the reverse of the dubs for the uh, japanese ones that would be funny yeah it would be but all right let's move into this hot topic at times i'm not talking about the little store that's in the mall you can pick up some piercings and cool garb and they actually have sh figure arts kind of a vegeta in there really it's interesting a topic of all places. Hmm. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the masterpiece Beast Wars MP41 Dinobot or Rat Trap, liking to call him Dino Butt. So, two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> I think we um we talked about this on ETR. Um, damn, that's a lot of money. Uh, yeah, especially for a mm -hmm. Beast Wars figure. I mean, Beast Wars fans better not be bitching <laughs> too much. You're hey. getting a Dinobot, but you're going to pay for it. <laughs> for real um and he's bigger he's bigger than primal but by like how much he's a big boy now this is just what they're thinking now this isn't real this is someone put that picture that we saw over here onto this but he's supposed to be like almost i mean what, what did we read like twice the size of primal yeah wow okay <laughs> He's not going to be twice the size, but he is supposed to be larger, and this is pretty much how he should be. Um, but again, we'll see once we finally get some actual real picks out there. Um, but as far as the show is concerned, you can see right here where he kind of stacks up. You see that oh, he's, wow. he is taller than Rhinox. Even oh, well, this is kind of a smaller pick, but he is you know a big boy. Um, I think on Shattercast they talked about who was it? it was Justin TTRX six yeah I think it was Justin he talked about how like okay if they're gonna go with Dinobot in this size they don't really have that much more to go with I mean like Megatron Megatron's yeah. gonna he, Megatron's about the he's gonna be bigger bulkier but he's about the same height maybe a tad bit taller than Dinobot um, so what else you got? I mean, you can see right here, you can see where Rhinox with Optimus Primal, Primal just being a tad bit taller. Then you see Dinobot with Rhinox there being considerably taller and bulkier. So, who knows? I never realized he was that much bigger. Yeah. I know that he's got some other gimmicks, like a spin, maybe possibly a spinning shield that his tail. Um... He does come with a golden disc. 
Um, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know if he comes with rubber skin for scales or I, you know, who knows, but I don't see it justifying that $250 price point. Yeah. Well, I mean, the other two Beast Wars offerings, offerings were digitally painted, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, primals, so especially. So, I mean, at least you know it's going to be a, it's going to be a lot of love put into it, at least from an aesthetic perspective and yeah. fit and finish to quote Justin again. <laughs> so, and right here, you can kind of see from the show where he stacks up with, um, some of the different characters like so you see him in the left corner with megatron that he, he's megatron is quite a bit bigger but if that's the case then megatron what it's gonna be like three hundred dollars like, damn yes. here, here. I mean, come on takara kicking me in the balls here this is i like beast wars but not that much um, now um just going back to the hasbro mattel thing wasn't there a talk of, about like hasbro getting takara yes Yes. Let's talk about mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Which could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing because we've seen what Hasbro can do with Masterpiece. <laughs> um. And then and then somebody joked online that uh you know all the repaints that they did with Combined Wars figures where it's to cars for like comp and well, bro. Fuck that bro shit. Got- but um, real quick, here is another um, scale as far as all of the Beast Wars. I didn't know Tigatron. Tigatron's taller than Optimus Primal? Get the fuck out of here. I didn't know that. For and the other pick, it looked like Primal is taller than... I don't know, right there he's not, but... Ah, man. Goddamn yeah, shifting. the hell scale matters. Yeah, I know. But, okay, so we got... Rhinox is 3.1 meters, 3.2 for Dinobot. Megatron is 3.4, supposedly. Um, man, Inferno is going to be expensive. <laughs> if we're going Damn. on size to price. Ugh. Yeah, but, uh, That's okay, bullshit. But we'll yeah, see. man. Then so much for Tigatron being a repaint of Cheetor. I know. Speaking upscale. of repaints, we have a lot of potential repaints for this masterpiece. Oh, so yeah, there you go. Yeah, it out. If you want the Fox Kids Dinobot, you want the original Dinobot. You want the Telemoka Dinobot, you want um how about the Cyber Beast Dinobot? Back Grimlock. Back. How about um the Grimlock? How about some of the other dino from the universe lines or um the oh shit, what's his name from? Beast Wars Neo? Hardhead. Um so yeah, you got all these guys. Thrustinator and all that stuff. So. All right, moving into some m- more masterpiece news. Um, here's Barricade. Tommy, I love you, man. But damn, I I don't know about this thing. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be shitting on it, so please forgive me. <laughs> so, but come on. Um, this is the masterpiece Barricade. Uh, it, okay. That is how you looked in the movie. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but it's just like, I guess I have this, when it says masterpiece, I feel like I want more than a, a slightly better human alliance version. I mean, it is its own mold. I mean, what do you guys think? Is this is looking like cool or what? Or, well, I, I'll, I won't say anything. But, me, me. Uh, I mean, no comment. You chicken shits. Come on. I mean, <laughs> dude, I, just, I don't. I don't like them. So yeah. I'm saving money. <laughs> I'm saving money. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, Jay, when saving... it comes... yeah, I was go just ahead, gonna Brian. say when it comes to uh, being a little bit better than Human Alliance, is that just saying that the Human Alliance ones were that much? Yeah, it's been a long day. Like, are, are, were those that well done to begin with, perhaps? I, don't know. I think the Human Alliance, as far as the look of what yeah. they're trying to portray in both modes, is a masterpiece in itself. Yeah. I mean, you look at the side swipe, look at the Bumblebee, even the Jazz. Those were good alt modes and good size. Um, and 
Yes, get rid of the human alliance gimmick, you know, where they have a little like chair or something that you can, you know, fire off of a gun or a missile and all that type of crap. Other than that, though, I mean, it, it was it was good, all right? You had the same function to have frenzy or it was rumble, wh whichever one that comes out of the chest or it can ride in the in the driver's seat, all that type of stuff. Um, I don't, I don't know. I just the the paint on it. It just doesn't scream masterpiece to me. The head joint doesn't scream masterpiece either. Um, that's all. Yeah, I hear you. That's yeah. it. Moving into some more movie news, we got some. They're doing some backdrops. Some other characters that will be coming out from Takara. You got a Megatron, Optimus Prime, Starscream. You got a Brawl. That little display. Um, other than that. Uh, on power of the primes you got alpha trion aka landmine and then alchemist prime aka submarauder so that's pretty cool i love the fact that we're getting these pretenders i don't know about you guys but i i like the pretenders for what it's worth it's master force Any you guys so, in on yeah, this line? Uh, yeah, about that though. Um, okay, so remember, um, Landmine was like the actual robot that was inside the shell, but they've changed him to where he's actually one of the primes. Yeah, Alpha Trion. Yeah, which is weird, but it's it's cool that. If you would have, I mean, five years ago, I had no clue that this is what's going to be happening. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just hoping probably third party would give me some type of pretender. Or I would be hoping that BotCon would do a good job on a pretender. Because um, that was the only like official probably that we'd get. It would be through BotCon. But this, I mean, it's cool. As far as the gimmick, the look, it's not bad. If you missed out on uh, Scrapnel, a.k.a. Shrapnel, you're going to be able to get him again. So that's cool. Legend class. So you can finish off the Insecticons. Since so Kickback just came out. And, um, there he is next to the G1, because for some damn reason, we always need to compare it to the original G1 toy. So we can see how far we've come. Yes. <laughs> Ball joints. <laughs> Ball joints, yeah. Thank you, Beast Wars. Which is funny. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks good, but I don't know. If you're trying to buy the stuff to, I don't know, reclaim your G1, I mean, I don't know. I would go Masterpiece or just go with the original. But Beachcomber looks pretty good. Yes, he does. Especially for Legend. I mean, all their Legends are actually really good most yeah, of them camera looks nice there's the original next to the power of the primes head sculpt looks badass like you just need the bird and a gold hand <laughs> and i'm happy hey you guys i'm a geologist cool i right know wind charger badass i like this one too i like the head sculpt Wow, this does look nice. Especially for a you know, retail toy. Yeah. There it is next to the original. Remember, the original is based off the Die Clone look. And then the Marvel Comics went with that, but not bad. I mean, try not to look at, you know, this space and all, but to me, it looks good. Uh, Slash, I'm. Is Slash a female character? Is what I want to know. Yeah, uh, that's what they're doing. Oh, oh it okay. is. Okay, so they yeah, are doing yeah. Her, yeah, like fans project. All right, cool. Yeah. Brian, did you get your fans project Colmera? Uh, no, but I have found that they are now available mm -hmm. in many different places. So I need to. Uh, I did cancel a pre-order with someone, yes, and I do have a certificate for five dollars off oh, my shit. lockbox. So I think I shall be contacting him shortly. 
So is this going to be like a shield, like for the chest on Infernicus or whatever the fuck it is? Probably. Now this Volcanicus. is a female. I would be hilarious if it is the chest piece and it formed boobs. <laughs> That's fucking. <laughs> or a bra or something. I'm not trying to be sexist, but come on, I'm thinking it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what? We got blackjack that fit on freaking Menasaur's chest? Power glide? Yeah. Power glide was a I mean, guy. because I'm looking at the packaging and it's a legend, so that's yep. what I was figuring because all those chest pieces were fucking legends and the weapons too, like Power Glide. Yep. So, so Nick, you would prefer like a deluxe or Voyager sized chest? I would prefer no chest, but I'm just saying oh. that that's what the fuck they're going to do. Not a chest person. <laughs> would you like more of a booty? Would you yeah, like why don't you, into the yeah. Why don't you make her like some <laughs> Kardashian ass injections? There you go. That'd be hilarious. Well, then you, if you had Slash, I mean, we got to go like the fans project. They had Kumara and Ichara. They, that'd be one cheek apiece. I mean, there you go. There you go. All right. Uh, here's uh, Slug, a.k.a. Slag. Um, for all you European, UK, don't get offended if I say slag. I'm just this what I grew up with, slag. Um, so there you go. That looks a, a good retail toy. It looks like a horn frog. <laughs> yeah. Kind of awkward, but it's okay. Um, so yeah, moving on. There he is with the G1. And swoop. Blue chest, which was good. Would you guys, you know, be angry if they went with the red chest? Nah. I wouldn't. I don't think I would be. I think I'd be be good with it. Yeah, me too. The picture art there has it with the red chest, which is funny. (laughs) All this is right there and there. I'm going to check that out. Interesting. Uh, and the red chest, yes. We never did get the blue. Blue was Diclone. And the only way to get it was either get the Diclone or you got the KO back in the day. They re-released all those Dinobots. Um, which is a really cool conspiracy theory. I love that. We can't. We got all these reissues, but we can't do Sunstreaker. We lost the mold, and we're not smart enough to recreate them. Recreate it, I know, right? <laughs> we're just too dumb. <laughs> Everyone else can do it. Crazy. But we just can't do it because we're just we're all thumbs. Oh. So I don't know. Yeah. They don't want to embrace the KO technology. Yeah. To recreate <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it's just sad. Um, here's Jazz. Repaint of light speed from the combiner ports. But um we're getting into the combiner war ports and stuff. Uh there's the original G one. Um, oh, look, his chest looks like the actual car. Yeah. Um, head sculpt looks good. They've never disappointed on the head sculpts. I'll nope. give them that. Nope. I nail them every time. Again, these are the Hasbro versions. I mean, I'm sure Takara will do a better paint you know, job and all that. I'm hoping, like, we're looking at Dreadwind here. We'll get an actual buster um, from Master Force and all that. But we'll see. But Dreadwind here. Again, combiner port. I mean, this is just a retool version of one of the aerial bots. So if you got that star scream, um, you got a leg, arm, whatever. Dreadwood. And again, we are getting his partner, his brother. So you can create the whole um, dark wind combination. Uh, there's star scream with his feet cannons. God, this thing. Yeah. No, no more no raise yeah. or feet raise. I feet just raise. have to keep remembering to tell myself that I'm not the demographic for this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I am. I like things that are like less than 20 steps. Because I'm not complicated like that. No, no, no. All right. Some of the stuff is like it's cool, but again, Starscream, I don't really care. Got so many different Starscreams. Grimlock here. We made fun of him on ETR. 
Um, it seemed like torso <laughs> to the head looks really good in Dinobot mode, but something just didn't sit right and blew out his ass. But the rest <laughs> of it was not cool. Prolapsed Grimlock. Yeah, yep. was... Ratchet and Wheeljack need to get sued by the Dinobots for doing this shit. Need to... it needs to be sewn back up. We didn't have the whole bone structure for the T-Rex. I'm sorry, Prime. This is... <laughs> we got a T-Rex, and we, we looked up rectum, and left rectum, and this was what rectum. we got. Rectum. Damn, damn rectum. Tell them. So, there we go. And Grimlock is a Voyager class to form Infernicus, whatever the dino bot. Volcanicus, I was Volcanicus, wrong. Volcanicus, yeah. There you go. Um, it's not like they're going to be any smarter. That's a cool name, though. Yeah. Volcanicus. Right up there with, uh, what was it? Velocitron. Victorion. Victoria. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> um, there you go. G1. 85 to 2017. Look how far we've come. No <laughs> die cast. Yeah, no, just... no chrome. Uh, no, no chrome. No fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, Optimus Prime here. He's a leader class. This looks actually yeah. pretty good. I will probably pick him up. Just for shits and giggles. Um, we said this about the whole Blaster situation for Combiner Wars. It's you know Blaster was a good piece, big enough piece. If you really felt the need, could throw it into a masterpiece size collection. Do you have uh -huh. one? Um, unless until you know you got KFC and all this stuff, but uh, you could do the same thing here. But I don't know why, because MP10 is readily available, so much better. But um, this could be used as a substitute. You're blaspheming You're legions. <laughs> <laughs> so um, those kids thought that this was way better than MP10. <laughs> wow, well, they need to be. Uh, um, okay. But yeah, I don't know. There it is. And then we also we've seen some. We've seen most of the stuff. This is the leader class Rodimus. I do admit I give props up to the person who designed this. As far as you can have the hot rod and Rodimus vehicle modes, that's pretty cool. I do not give props up to the person who didn't consider transformation and just turn it into a fucking disaster. You know, <laughs> does that Rodimus alt mode, does it look mistransformed? Look at how the, the tailpipes are for yeah. the uh, up yeah. on the cab. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, it's got the hands uh -huh. there. I mean, even this, his arms right out of his shoulders, yeah. nothing there. I just, but, uh, it's yeah, like they designed it around the vehicles and then formulated somewhat of a bot mode out of it. But look at the alt mode. Like, See how you know how the exhaust is supposed to go up? Oh yeah, it's not connecting. Yeah, oh yeah, this yeah, is uh -huh. yeah, this has got to come down. I'm sure it's on a swinging hinge somewhere. I hope to God it is, because <laughs> that's gonna be like, oh okay, um, oh, Jesus, gonna have some muffler problems there. All right, here's a G1. It's. I will say this. It's better than the G1. For what it's worth. Vehicle mode ain't. No, no. Vehicle mode. Vehicle mode. Again, Hell. though. Back then, vehicle mode was the best out of that old school yeah. Rodimus. And um, I will say it's almost the same for this new Power of the Primes. Unless you got it in certain angles. I mean, if you're looking at it straight on and you don't see this. That gap right there, yeah, okay. I, I, I give props up to it, but I, don't know, I gotta move on. Um, shattered glass, pretty cool. I like wow. that, it's nice that they're doing that. I mean, we can't wait for Botcon to do it. Oops, um, whoopsie, so, whoops, oh no, they're gone. Um, that's unfortunate. And this plus, this thing would have been probably a yeah, you want the butt conversion? It's four hundred dollars just for that. Yeah. Um, but it's nice that we're getting this, and it's mass. It's gonna be mass retail, so that's cool. It's not some e hobby exclusive or some shit like that. So that's nice. Yeah. So I dig it. 
it'd be cool if we got that prime in shattered glass colors also. Mm. It makes sense. Wait. But... Yeah. All right, moving into third party. Um, MMC, my new favorite company for third party, Chug. Mm -hmm. um, we got Override. And then we have Thunderclash. Thunderclash being this dude, Override, or Nitro Convoy. What is Override and slash Nitro Convoy from? Uh, Galaxy Force. Galaxy Force, yeah. Uh, right. Or Cybertron. Cybertron here, yeah. yeah. Am, I, am I just like not remembering from like more than meets the eye or Lost Light? I don't remember him from that, but I just remember I don't remember the race hot shot yeah. on the whatever speed planet it was. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't remember seeing her in the comics either. All right. I was just wondering. But yeah, that Thunder Clash is fucking beautiful. Yeah, he is. I like him. Um, like everybody everybody was complaining about the reuse of the mold and I, I think it fits. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, we're, fits. we're not we're not talking about like your G one or G two or whatever the original you know, version of the character was we're talking about, you know, more than meets the eye. Yep. And especially the alt mode looks exactly like the fucking, uh, what was it? Uh, shit. Shit. The, the uh, shit. No, the, oh. uh, like life saving thing. Life saving uh, thing. Life saving thing. Life savers. No, um, no, man, uh, uh, rescue bot. Um, Ratchet. No. Life support unit. Life support unit. Yeah, the alt <laughs> mode looks exactly like the life support unit and more than meets the eye. Okay. That's cool. It would be great if this? MMC will give us obviously the DJD. They're they're coming out slowly but surely. Yeah. Uh, Star Saber and a Metal Hawk. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of cool. Um, here's Deadlock. This thing looks good. I like it. MMCs. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that looks good right there. It's like, all right, good yeah. proportion, but man, look at that shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <"Whoa."> <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was that big. Um. Okay. Huh. Oh, there he is. Pretty cool. And then he got a drift. Yeah, at least I'm out. No, I don't, I don't know. I'm just kidding. You're out? What? Yeah. Oh, her shoulders are big, man. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. <clears throat> yeah. But I guess if that's what he looked like, that's what he looked like. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, even even the Generations Drift shoulders was kind of <laughs> a yeah, bit on the huge side. Yeah. 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 I love that toy. That yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, up next is the Wei Zhang Mega... Um, Mega Megatron, Mega Mega Master, Mega, M P P P something. M P P P P P. See, ah, uh, looks good. Um, yeah, he does. Um, if you have the M P P ten Prime, obviously, I mean, this goes perfectly with it, and it looks it looks good. They they the could crotch. make a they could make a lot of money making that crotch plate for M P thirty six. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got mod fans made a new fusion cannon for MP36. So there's that. Let's do that out there. I just threw it out there because I like the uh, the old school '70s type of fabric car uh, type of uh, couch. It's on. Mainly. <laughs> well, so uh, the the proportions the same. I would assume this is all about voice chip stuff. Yeah, this is about the voice chip. Oh, so it's a Welker voice chip. From they said the G one movie. Oh, oh um, nice. Something like that. I believe. But yeah. All right. Moving into non transformer stuff. We have fan uh, stories. No. Um Hot Toys. This is um Hella from Thor Ragnarok. Kate Blanchett. You know, all evil. Look good though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. This is what I like. Spoiler, sorry, <laughs> Nick. If you want to bounce, nah, but it's all right. It's it's all in the tra in every trailer. <laughs> so I like this uh, accessory piece that she has the the Mjolnir that she's she can catch. 
Um, we'll see it here a little bit later. There, right there. Where um, she catches that's it and dope. Then, um, then destroys it. So that's pretty badass. There's all the stuff that she gets. She doesn't come with an alternate head, though. With her non-crowned horned look. Um, would have been kind of cool if she came with an alternate head. Yeah. Since we see her in the in the movie like that. But she does come with several pairs of hands. She comes with her two sword slash daggers. She comes with the... Um, oh, what the hell's the fire called? From, I forgot what the fire is called. Eternal flame. Her. Eternal flame. Yeah, her eternal flame. Bangles. Awesome. Good tune. She's in a half. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah. Love Belinda Carlisle. Belinda Carlisle. She was the chick in the Bangles. The Bangles, yeah. Home. The lead singer. No, oh, Susanna Hoff. What? No, oh, oh, you're thinking about the Go-Go. You're thinking about the Go-Go. Oh, man. my bad. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh. Susanna Hoffman or Hoff or whatever the other name. Something. Mm. Yeah, she was my bad. fucking hot. Damn. I need a moment. I'll be right back. So, um, here's um, yeah. Wonder Woman, Justice League. Nice. She comes with a bonus accessory, a black colored hooded robe. How you doing? She's got hair. That was pretty cool. Holy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah man. It's there. Does look like Gail Godot. Yeah, she does. Look at that hair. Looks a little weird, it's right? There. Yeah, <laughs> she's got the hair. <laughs> she's got the gold hair. Like, scalper. It's um, a good likeness. I mean, yeah, it likeness. is. Yeah. Are there comparisons with the uh, first version? No. Or... No. I'm, I'm just kind of curious if there's any difference. I'm not that nice. Like, yeah. <laughs> Because um, her uniform didn't change, right? So Not really. There's slight changes, I think, but yeah, not really. Um, I do like this accessory piece. Um, the little kind of using her wrist gauntlets to deflect um, whether it's bullets or energy blasts or something. I thought that was pretty cool. I'm sure our Crashbox Customs uh, Pinkerton's going to be in on this. Uh, I assume so. I always assume so. Hopefully it doesn't take as long. <laughs> but if it is, hey, you better get that pre-order in now. That's right. See this in 2025. <laughs> uh, but you also get another pair of gauntlets that kind of, it's she's either absorbing the energy blast, which is kind of cool. And she's got her lasso. That's a cool effect. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Couple of mother box. And there's all the accessory pieces she comes with. So the bonus accessories is the mother box and the robe. Um, she comes <clears> with <throat> two lassos, the two pairs of gauntlets, the effect pieces for the gauntlet, the lasso on her belt, sword, shield, several pairs of hands, and obviously the stand. Not bad. Okay, going back to Justice League, just curiosity. We all know that Superman's going to probably be in the movie, right? Yeah, they've already shown the black suit and everything. Okay. Do you think hey. it's just going to be one like scene at what? the end, like Apocalypse is going to, you know, there's going to be a boom tube, whatever. Here comes Dark Side. They all line up. It's about to take him on, but all of a sudden, here comes Superman. He looks back at him and says, I got this. And then they end the movie right there. Uh, I don't know. I think they're probably going to do like Marvel did at the end of Avengers where, you know, we might actually see somebody sitting in the throne in the shadows with glowing red eyes, you know, and they're talking about how uh, Stephen will fail to take the Earth. Okay. That's what I think. I could be completely, totally wrong, but that's just me. I just, I don't know. I just don't know how they're going to utilize Superman. I'm just kind of curious. Like, I don't know. Like I've watched the trailers and stuff, so that's cool. Like there, there's already that scene with Alfred in the trailers. Oh yeah, there. Some he said something about. Yeah, and then like, it. yeah. 
I think I think he's going to be in a good part of the movie. All right. Probably like the last quarter of the movie. I was, yeah. Yeah. Are you going to see? Are we going to see emotions on on Batman? It's just like he's going to just throw up a pump fist out of the Batmobile when he flies oh, by. Geez. He's like, yes, yes. No, I doubt right. <laughs> <That's laughs> it. He's, he's right. going to say, "How do you like them apples?" Yeah. <laughs> My bestie's back. My bestie's back. <laughs> Batman's I got this kryptonite go, ring to keep him in place too. <laughs> No. Um, Batman's probably gonna go. Oh, you're back! It's like, oh, I had this. He's gonna, be, he's gonna be like about time. Pretty much. No, oh, that would be hilarious. All right, up next is the uh, Cayuto uh, eighty nine Batmobile. This is six point seven inches long, retailing for around seventy six dollars. It's got LED headlights and tail lights. Um, really well detailed though, for its size. Open and closed canopy. And it's got some other little features, which we'll see here in a second, right there. It's got the rotator stand. It's got some grapple hook, um, machine guns, the little wing pop-outs to take out your clown gang and such. Yeah. So, What do you think that thing is on the bottom? This thing? Yeah, what's that? Uh, a paddle. I don't know. Maybe that's yeah. to open up a panel somewhere. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. It's a spudger. This extra piece oh, of plastic God. that they decided, you know what, just give it to them. The fans will come up with something for it. Um, who knows? Detail inside looks pretty good. Oh, that's great. You said this is like seven and a half inches long? Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Not as long as, but, you know, it'll work. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now, would you guys want the the battle shell, armored shell, just for bonus? Yeah. Kind of cool? No? All right. Okay. Why not? All right, I showcased this last week or week before. I don't know if you're still into the Elite Series Disney Store exclusives. Chewbacca was on October 27th. October 31st was Finn, and November 7th was Poe. So there they are. These are a little bit larger, more in the seven-inch scale. So not not too uh, compatible, I guess, in some ways with the um, Black Series. We'll say the Poe looks a little bit better than the Black Series version, though. Doesn't look like he's coming right out of Forks or a boy band or some crap. So, no worries. Marvel Legends, the next wave to come out, the Okoye. This isn't Christian Okoye, the Nigerian Nightmare. This is um, this is female. This is the for the Black Panther movie line. And much like most of the movie lines, you're going to get a couple of figures from the movie and then others from the comic book. So it's a nice balance. So it's not bad. So you get Black Panther, Invincible Iron Man, the Eric Killmonger version of Black Panther. You got Black Bull, Submariner, another Submariner. And then you get um, uh, Nakia, I think. Can't just read her name there, but. I'm hoping the Marvel Legends start ramping up a little bit, but like an X-Men wave. All right, up next, here's um, good old Super 7's Mass of the Universe Classics line, Filmation line and such. They're just showcasing the fact that here are the accessor pieces that come with each one. That's what you got. So Dial a Mug, you have there. Um, Granita, one of the rock people. Karg from the movie. Obviously, Manny Faces, which comes with quite a few accessory pieces, which is pretty cool. Funny thing is, they didn't show him with his different faces. Merman. That'll be the biggest fail ever if he only has the one face. Yeah. <laughs> that would suck. 
I remember getting this guy back in the day. I was like, I watched an episode and it was, it was good times back then. I asked my dad, oh man, I really want to get this Manny Face character because he was like this, what was he? He was in the forest terrorizing this place and He-Man brought him to light or some crap like that. I remember or something, I don't know. But we went to the toy store and I was like going through all that mass of the universe and he was there. I'm like, yes. Um, before there was an actual word, scalper life. Um, her man, Sorceress looks pretty damn good. Mm, um, yeah. I do like that. She does come with a different wing apparatus accessory piece, so you don't have to have them, her arms flocked out or whatever. And she has a different head. Yep. Which is pretty nice. A mm -hmm. lot better than the uh, Master Universe Classics version, which yeah. that was poorly designed. They just didn't understand what to do with the wings in the back. This looks good. Tongue Lasher. Yes, he does come with a tongue. Um, you got Rap Trap. His accessory pieces there, part of the horde. That's it. All right, neck of news. We got Deadpool, 18 inches, quarter scale. This is the X Force version. So if you're familiar with the first release, guess what? Here you go. Again. I think majority of everything's the same. Uh, if you're a Silent Night, Deadly Night fan, <laughs> you're going to get a NECA figure for its um, anniversary release. You've made it through Halloween. Now try and survive Christmas. Um, I have this movie. <laughs> I, I did watch it for this Halloween. Um, it's for kicks. Man, this kid. I, I love the fact of where he worked. He worked in a toy um, store and getting to see all the cool toys and stuff in there. That was pretty badass, but man. When did this movie come out, Jane? Uh, early 80s, I think. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure. I think it's early. I'm sure someone in the chat is going to say He knows when you've been naughty years after what that say? witnessing his parents' murder by a robber. Yeah, it was a little more than just uh, murder there, huh? Yeah. But yeah, this is coming out. Also, it's kind of like what they NECA did with um, Chucky. Uh, they did a Child's Play anniversary release with a DVD with the figure. They're going to do the same thing here. Um, you can get either or. I believe one of them. I don't remember which one. It's like, like they're numbered out of 2,000. There's only 2,000 pieces made. Um, not to, you know, discount this, but I don't think they're going to be selling out. For all you Power Rangers fans, um, Legacy is going back to the flip. I'm hoping this is wrong, but it's yeah, they're doing the flip figures so you can um, flip their heads around. <laughs> I don't know. This is back when they did this in the original line. It's supposedly in the Legacy line. Uh, wow. Wow. I hope someone's fucking with it. It's just horrible. But yeah, there's Jay they're coming out with Tommy, Jason, and Kimberly. So green, red, and pink. Rain I mean, pink. are you just showing us what they used to look like? This isn't yeah. what they're going to look like. Yeah, this is what <laughs> they're they're getting they're going for this look. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. This is I mean, I'm just I'm hoping they're not because this is just retarded. Um so they already this is encore release. Yeah, this is like, hey, those Transformers back in 2000, they did like a reissue encore. Should we do the same? Yeah, that would be good. I do like the new sports. I'll say that much. Um, so far, we've seen the Sabretooth Tiger. A lot more articulation. And then there's the T-Rex. So that's pretty cool. No word of this is going to combine. I, I don't think it is be honest with you, but I could be wrong also. I have no idea. This is just it's interesting. They can sit. Sit, boo-boo, sit. So that's awesome. Alright. You want to be the White Ranger? Want a yeah. one-scale helmet? Cool. Um, any of you Dead or Alive fans out there, Figma's coming out with a Kazumi. So that's pretty cool. And hopefully we'll get a Hayabusa. 
uh, Ayani, you know, Helena, Tina, Zach. I think that's pretty cool. Remember with Sigma, they come with their own stand, a slew of other accessory pieces and such. And um, not bad. Not quite 112 scale. Um, but it kind of depends which line you're looking at. But if you're an anime fan or in a video game fan, not bad. All right, lastly, for all you Common Rider fans out there, there's Common Rider Skull here, which is pretty cool. Sukichi Nuramar, uh, Namura, sorry. No, no, Narumi? Narumi. I don't know. I can't get these damn names right. Um, cool looking figure. Um, I just love the whole Moonwalker, you know, and it, I know it's part of the whole show and everything else, but it just reminds me so much of the smooth criminal. That's all. Comes with two fedoras. He comes with the Lost Driver. He does come with um, the Skull Magnum and such. You can also customize this figure into three different versions. You can have the Skull Crystal version, the just normal Skull, Imposter Skull. I think that's pretty badass. He looks cool. Um, this is SH Figure Arts again. Um, pretty badass. The Shio Skull. I'm a writer. Pretty. Yeah, there's there. I love that post. It's like, and are you okay? You okay, any? No. All right, that's it. It's the end of the show. Um, it's been fun. Back next year. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm gonna put the camera on Nick here, so you guys can check him out. What's that? Um, now we're moving into Blasphemy Past. All right. Uh, where we the Um. Got too many albums. Brian. Hey, so, so there. yeah, <laughs> sorry, I just, uh, just responding to some texts here. Oh, here, I'll text you then. Um, <laughs> um, is Dust still there next to you, obviously, or is he passed up? No, he's, uh, he's, he's chilling on the couch. Uh, are we uh, going over, uh, Ragnarok Monday? Um, or, you know, I think we've all seen it. Yeah, we probably will. Okay, okay cool. I have a little um, blurb if we want to have on the show on ETR. A blurb, huh? Educational segment. Oh. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. I don't yeah, care. let's do it. Um, just on some of the characters and where they came from, that's about it. Hey, that would, I'd love to, to, to hear about it before I watch it again. I can get a little more understanding of some of these folks. So far, I just have what I've pieced together through the MCU. Are you seeing it again? Um, I will eventually. Yeah, um, I'll probably want to see it one more time before it leaves their theaters. No. Nice. It. Uh, I mean, I didn't totally hate it. I'm a six point five, James. Oh, uh, not oh, a six. Six. Oh, okay. Six point five. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> All right. Cool. This coming from the person who gave BVS a four. That's right. So, all right, you can see the blast from the past. Yes, sir. All right. Um, again, I will put the link in the description if you want to just bypass and get right to the nostalgia giddies. So here we go. We're gonna be looking at Thundercats, 2011 when it first came out, Cartoon Network. Um, to me. I will go out on a limb and I will say it was probably one of the best remake 80s cartoon properties um, to date. Um, I, I think it had a lot of potential. Yeah. And, and it didn't get the support it, it should have got, unfortunately. And it, it stemmed from the toys. It stemmed from, you know, Cartoon Network. It just stemmed from everything. But it just really had a solid grounding and it's it i love shows that goes go back they still give you that kind of feels 
but they give you more information so you can like, oh, that's cool. Now that makes sense if they did it this way. I like yeah. that. So 26 episodes. This had a Japanese anime style. Um, so that, that was pretty cool. That's right up my alley. I liked it. Um, again, there you go. Whole storyline was, you know, you have Claudus, which we'll see here in a second. And he's raising his two sons, blah, blah, blah. But um, it was released on DVD. You could get the three different volumes, or you could just go and get the Blu-ray complete series. This was a region one, so it's an official release, at least here for the United States. Um, not sure about overseas and all that, but oh, cool. that's right. I might pick this up then. And it's fairly inexpensive too and easy to find. So oh, okay. quite nice. Unfortunately, it's tw- only 26 of it. We will spoil this show too. If you're not familiar with the show, I'm, I'm you know, sorry. Um, but BS doesn't stand for Victory Saber today. <laughs> um, here are the uh, voice actors for the series. We had Will Friedel as Lino. If you know him as um, Eric from Boy Meets World or Bumblebee from R.I.D. or Terry McGinnis from Batman Beyond. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then you can see like Kevin Michael Richardson. I mean, we know him as Bulkhead and uh, other characters and such. Uh, Matthew Mercer, who plays Tiger. He is, if you're a Dragon Ball super fan, he's actually the voice of Hit. So that's pretty cool. Oh, cool. And such. So. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. I'm watching The Gifted. Huh. Senior moment. Things are going there. D. Bradley Baker. He plays quite a few other characters, not just the fat cat here, uh, but he plays um, he plays Sly, and he's also, if you're familiar with the Star Wars Clone Wars, he plays predominantly every single clone. Oh, that means Captain Rex, Cody, all that. So Clancy Brown is Groon, Jaga, Corey Burton. Uh, Larry Kenny comes back as Claudus, which, cool. if you're familiar with him, he is the original voice of Lino in the '80s Thundercats. Oh, okay, Clancy so, Brown. Good. I love Clancy Brown's voiceovers, man. It's, he's good. Yeah, Clancy Brown is awesome. I mean, Lex Luthor, yeah. but every, I mean, he does a lot of stuff. Yeah, I just, you know, then of course he was the uh, the main guard in, in Shawshank Redemption, the main mm-hmm. CEO. Yeah. I like Kurgan. Kurgan, yeah. Yeah. I, like yeah. I think he was even Daredevil season two, took on the Punisher's Wrath. Yeah. Was he was he Goliath in Gargoyles? I can't remember. No, no, that was, was Keith uh, David. Yeah, Keith, Keith David. David. Yeah, same guy that did Spawn. Yep, yep. Keith David. He was the dude from There's Something About Mary, right? It's just the beans with the Franks. Was that him? <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, he was the a dad. dad, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Dad. yeah, that was good. Um, all right, moving on. Um, so. Beautiful scenery um, out of, I mean, I've seen quite a few animes, and th- this is right up there. Um, very well storytelling as far as just the overall look. This is New Thundera. Um, you get, you know, where the elephants hang out, which I don't know how those elephants climb those stairs, but they do. <laughs> yeah, um, this is, they, I mean, great world building here for sure. Yeah. Definitely. And um, the desert scenes. I mean, all, all this stuff looks really great. All right. So yeah. the first episode we get, we go through the whole works of Mumra coming back. Lino is kind of this, you know, carefree prince where his father, Claudius, wants him to be, you know, you're going to be the king. You need to start acting like it. And he starts to with diplomacy with some of the lizards that they, they caught. But he starts utilizing the sort of omens and he has a vision. He sees the, you know, he doesn't really have the sight beyond sight just yet, but he, he did have a vision. He saw the return of Mumra. And then we go through all that type of crap. But a couple of episodes down the road, you get Legacy. And Legacy was a very good episode where you get to see that the the cats are actually working for Mumra. And 
Lionel gets kind of whisked away in, from the Book of Omens into the body of his ancestor, which is Leo. And you get to see the whole coming of you know, how Mumra wants these four power stones here. He wants the War Stone, which is the Eye of Fundera. He wants the Tech Stone. He wants the Spirit Stone. And then he wants the last one, which is the Soul Stone, which unfortunately the season didn't get picked up for number two, and we don't get to see anything about that last stone. But um, the whole episode was centered around the War Stone um, and such. And there's Leo utilizing, stealing, and creating a, a revolution, much like uh, Korg would do, except Leo didn't have a beak. And then we get to see them power up into these kind of cool looking mechs, armors, pretty badass. Good episode. I don't know if you guys remember seeing it or I've ever seen it, but I need to rewatch. I don't remember any of this. Um, yeah, I remember this. This is badass. They made a toy of the uh, gold one too. I know. I can't do it. Oh, sorry. That's uh, all right. Um, so you see, I see Leo here, all armored up. Um, he also helps take out some of the stones, depowers Mumra a little bit, again causing this revolt. And then going into, uh, then they start, they they start crashing onto New Third Earth and such, which Leo kind of knows, which is Lionel. Um, unfortunately, in the second season, they were going to go over more um, kind of in depth history of why Slythe hates the Thundercats and why the Lizards decided to rebel against the Thundercats. We were also going to see how Mumra created the Snarfs, and then go into um, um, just more history with like the last stone and all this other type of stuff too but um there's the armor which is kind of cool that is really awesome we also got the the tie-in that's another thing i like about this series is we got the tie-in to the trilogy thundercats silverhawks and tiger sharks in that episode of legacy you can see that there's mako and then you got monstar there which is pretty badass and i really wish it would have kind of pushed forward so we can see more of it and monstar had a cameo in the first episode too yeah so it's they were going in the right direction and i liked it uh, it's just they needed more time uh, but just think we could have gotten some probably if the if the line was better um because i mean we'll get to the toys here in a little bit but um man to have some tiger sharks some silver hawks Oh yeah, I don't know, but there's Mako, which we've done a blast on the fast on the tiger, tiger sharks and Silverhawks. I think I was like one of the first ones I did with Silverhawks. Yeah, yep, pretty cool. So, so uh, I may have missed it, but Tiger Sharks was made by the same production companies, type stuff like that, like back in Lormar. the eighties. It was all Lormar, huh. Warner Brothers. I have to. Uh, I never saw it. I'll have to go. I'll have to go back do some do some watching. You never saw Tiger Sharks. Nope. Get the hell out of here. <sighs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm sorry. Oh. No, you're not missing quite. I mean, I will say out of the three properties, it's on the bottom of the chain. Okay. The total pull. To be honest with you. Um, but. Other characters, we got Tigus here. He he was the aerial commander for Mumra. Um, and then we had all these other, you know, the revolt. We had the dogs. Um, we had the gorillas. Elephants. And, you know, the lizards. And then there's other, you know, being such. All right, moving into characters, main characters. We have Jaga here. Um, unlike Jaga in the original where he kind of sacrificed himself to pilot the ship to third earth um he sacrificed himself here and was kind of um corrupted not corrupt i don't know if he's corrupted he was um his essence was transported into this like like lantern vessel and he led the way to the tower of omens to the book of omens um, but he had his own little like elite team here the clerics which um you can see that ty uh, not ty chitara was part of it yeah 
they were fast. He just, but um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, man. And then he got, but they got wiped out by Mumra, unfortunately. And Chitar was the only one to survive. All right, we got Claudius here, who was the king at the time. Trying to teach his son some kingness. No, he's just trying to teach him something. But unfortunately, it. the other thing about Thundercats, the, the new Thundercats, it was not darker, but it, it took on a more, a, like, older you know, subject material like death. Um, and, you know, it, it wasn't so lighthearted at times. You know, it was good. Yeah. yeah, the rivalry between Lido and Tiger was a lot darker. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we're going to see that. Just the evolution of Lino becoming the Lord of the Thundercats, seeing what he was seeing and experiencing what he was experiencing was pretty cool instead of, you know, it was different in the original because he he was a he was a kid, and then yeah. he grew up, but he still had that kid kind of mentality, and he went through the trials and all that, and became the Lord of the Thundercats. This here, he, he's you know he's already, you know, adult, you know, and so he's he's kind of learning it, and he's the one that was hell bent on technology at the very yeah. beginning, but they were like, no, technology's not around, but then all of a sudden here come the lizards, mummer with technology, and it was like, holy shit. Yeah. You know, he, was, he was right. Snarf is not a, not a, um, nanny, nanny made, uh, you know, motherly figure. So, just a, uh, creature, pet. <laughs> so, not bad. All right, speaking of Tigra, there's Tigra. I do like the fact that they're siblings in this one, opposed to in the original. Yeah. Um, he's an adoptive uh, sibling, though, which I thought that was pretty cool. Um, he took the technology. It was kind of nice to see him with his bolo whip, but he also had the handgun that he always used. And he was a flyer, which was amazing, which the Tigers, for some reason, were naturally gifted flyers, I guess. That was part of the one of the episodes with Voltaire. But speaking of the rivalry, they were always beating the shit out of each other. Yeah. Tiger always thought he should be, he's the older one, he should have been king. But he wasn't part of the bloodline. Yeah. So, and that's why Groon took to him. And Groon, we got to see more in depth with Groon, with the relationship with him and Panthro and the throne and why he became a traitor, all that type of stuff. I thought that was good. It was fleshed out a little bit more than the original. No, I didn't realize he was adopted. I thought it was, uh, I just thought, uh, I don't know, maybe Claudus, maybe he shacked up with a tiger. Mm. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's kind of like, it's not that adult ish, <laughs> something like that. Story. But, well, you know, I thought he married a tiger and, you know, they have kids. One turns to be more lion than tiger. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, like, oh, they, you know, they, you're I, the first yeah, born. The series. <laughs> yeah. You're the first born, but yeah. you're not a lion, so yeah. so much. Yeah. Too bad for you, buddy. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Throughout the series, Tiger finally, you know, understood. Kind of like that Vegeta Goku rivalry. Goku always trying, you know, is, is the best no matter what. And then Vegeta had that final moment with Boo saying, You are the best. I, I yield to you. Tiger finally had that moment of his own. When he finally met his real father and, you know, knowing the whole purpose. But, yeah, here he is, left on the doorstep. There's Claudius oh. and his wife. Okay, so Tigra was adopted. Yes. Okay. Tigra was left there because of the, the curse that they, his family endured because they turned into those weird kind of demon creatures, which is one of the episodes with yeah. his father there. So, and he said that he could stay there with him, but he said no. Up yours, Dad. Don't with Lionel. May look like a tiger, but my lion at heart. Chitara, this was also nice too. Um, Man, you, you you knew about the relationship in the beginning in the original series between Tiger and Chitara, but it was never really fleshed out. Right. It was really fleshed out in the 2011. 
Um, yeah. And it was it was good. I mean, it was kind of a triangle type relationship because Lionel liked Chitara, but Chitara was just doing her, you know, her duty of protecting the prince. It was also a tease, I think, at times. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can see she still has, she, you know, she's got her speed. You know, she's the fastest woman on New Third Earth. Like the Flash, I'll run for her. It's funny. Um, just an all around badass. So. But she, I love the episode where she first came about as far as getting to the kingdom and wanting to be trained under Jaga and become a cleric. Um, and obviously Tigra was, you know, posing. He was trying to be a guard, trying to be pretty tough in front of her and all that type of stuff. Jaga basically turned her away and said, no, nope, I'm not going to let you in. She had nowhere else to go, so she stayed there, and Tigra, you know, befriended her and, um, you know, gave her food and all this type of stuff, and that's how their relationship grew. Such. Where are you doing? Okay. So, how are you doing? <laughs> hey, hey. Tiger and Tichara sitting in a tree. Sitting in a tree. D O G G Y. No. <laughs> They're cats. It doesn't work that way, James. I know. It's not dog stuff, but it's still kind of the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I've been drinking too much. But yeah, they, it, was kind of, it was cool to see that relationship. And then Lino had his like moment of like, okay, I need to focus on being, you know, something, you know, like, the actual leader, king, all this kind of crap. Can't get into this. Why the kid? Why the cat? Um, in my opinion, were just as annoying as they were in the original. Uh, they were twins here. Um, yeah, such, but they got into trouble a lot. Um, they were thieves, just street rats, essentially. So, but they had all the same little gimmicks. Kind of, they didn't have those little like little capsule bombs. Okay. But and then you got Panthro here, which is pretty cool. Voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, one of the generals. I like his story. He loses his flipping arms <laughs> to get the Spirit Stone. I mean, that was pretty badass. The Burbles decide, you know what? We'll help you out. You got a Burbel hand. Didn't really like it. We got these other mechanical hands. And you can actually stretch them out kind of like Mr. Fantastic and such. It's pretty cool. And they incorporated that into the toy line. Thunder Tank was there, which was pretty badass, except the toy version. Yeah. Um, large. Such. And then they got this, the huge Thunder Tank in the in the uh, latter part of the series, which was pretty cool too. Which would have been a badass, like slash playset type of thing. It would be like the general from G.I. Joe. That would have been yeah. cool. Or the, yeah, the headquarters. So, uh, Pumira here. Pumira, yeah, Pumira. Um, interesting. Spoiler. She's a traitor. Um, she helped out. She was. Um, she was freed by Lion-O out of the, what was it, some type of um, city run by the dogs, run by um, Dobo. Joins up with them, but she actually hates Lion-O and the rest of the Thundercats because she was there at the very beginning, and they left, and she tried getting help from them, and she, she feels that they abandoned her and abandoned everyone that was at New Thundera. So she um, she died and was resurrected by... Mumra. Yeah, so, Linksa was there for a little bit. Don't know what else happened to him. I don't remember this part. I must not have finished yeah. the series. I don't think he was I in the very either. beginning. He was in the first story arc. Oh, okay. He was in episode two when the lizards were approaching. Huh. Yeah, and then we never saw him ever again. The only other one we never saw was Bengali. Hmm. Never saw him. It was unfortunate. Forgot the scale. So we'll just move on. But she liked Theo. That's all I know. Burbles. Robert Bell. Yeah. 
this was a good episode. I like this. This was the song um, of the Pedalars. We got Emmerich here. And they only live for a day. So Lino got to see Emmerich as a kid grow all the way to, you know, all the way to his death, which kind of inspired him, which was kind of cool. Uh, that is a cool story. Yeah. Yeah. Meeting in the elephants, which was funny. Um, which is, um, again, the elephants, the uh, pedalars, those were all exclusive to the 2011 story. So you have Annette, Auburn. Um, these guys were also, the fishmen were exclusive to the 2011 series. And essentially, they're going through all these adventures, meeting up with these new groups, and he's uniting them indirectly, sometimes directly, and such. This was a great episode also, if you saw the Duelist and the Drifter, where Lino thinks he's a badass and um, takes on the Duelist and loses the Sword of Omens. And the Drifter here kind of gives him some pointers and stuff. But he's, he's a the cool character and then we got the wood forager zig which is a bleeder gammy nips they were paper masters but um bad at first but then turned good uh with this guy by regor who happened to uh, give chitara a new wooden staff give her some wood so <laughs> Mm -hmm. I definitely want to see this again. I'm starting to remember a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yep. Um, Dobo here. That's where they found Pumira. Friends with um, uh, Panther there. They uh, included the dogs because of the whole Wild Storm continuity. They're doing. Oh, yeah. I remember those comics too. That was a good yeah. stuff. Uh, Jorman here helped them get to the Tech Stone. Which was up in the air with birds. And there's the birdman right there. They got horse. Ponzi, again, exclusive to the 2011. Hence his name, Ponzi, schemer, scammer. You know. Then we get to the bad guys. We have Mumra here, which is iconic. He's still in his little red robe, the red riding hood, bandages. There's the. Uh, what I was talking about with Jaga, he's inside this kind of vessel. It's his spirit and such. Umra beefed up on roids, the ever living. It's pretty cool. I did like the fact that in the new series that he got, he had a claw type shield gauntlet along with the sort of plunder to match, you know, or the, the Thundercats matched his garb. So I thought mm -hmm. that was pretty cool all the stones connected to it. Yeah. That was all from the Legacy episode. He also had his own little chariot, which was pretty cool. He also, in this series, was more... Um, he was weakened more by sunlight opposed to the original, I believe. So, Slythe was a lot bigger. Just kind of cool. Yeah, man. You guys like the series? Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Cool. And it it looks like his uh his vehicle toted his coffin around. Yep. Yeah, he would go in his coffin and it would like it was like his little like entrance to his butt cave. <laughs> and he would just like get into his vehicle with it. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Uh the pyramid, same thing. Again, visually it's stunning. Um you still had all the, you know, ancient you know, spirits of evil and all that type of stuff, but I now, Mumra was more of a bat type of creature. Is that right? Uh, no. Like a vampire? He had like bat like wings. Yeah. He yeah. Was uh, uh -huh. No, he was, he was just, yeah, yeah, he had the wings and such. And opposed to what, yeah, from the original where he just has the flowing cape and stuff. Cape. And just, yeah. 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 Sure. yeah, I could say that, yeah. There's Groon. Hell yeah. Uh, Slice. Um, what I like about this too, instead of them just being Jackalman and Monkeyan, we actually got their real names. 
I thought that was pretty badass too. Monkey in here was captured by the bird people. His actual name is Atticus. And then Jack O'Min's real name is Kanar. Hmm. Uh, okay. Cool also. Um, and they're a lot larger too. <laughs> Voltaire here. That's Vulture Man. Again, we got his real name, Voltaire. Um, he was, in a way, just an asshole towards the Thundercats when they came on to his, you know, city. But then he 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 saw the power of Mumra. Then he he decided to switch sides and became a uh, part of Mumra's little group of very little mutants. So Rataro is in there also. He ran the slave camp. Or um or if that's too mean, uh, prisoners who work for nothing. <laughs> and I watched Fist Fight the other day. That was funnier now. Um, I so wanted my daughter to uh, do a little thing like that. <laughs> I fuck it with you. <laughs> I fuck it with you, you punk bitch. I love that. <laughs> oh, man. That was funny. All right. Uh, we got the driller from the original also, which is pretty cool. It would have been cool if we got a toy of it, but no. Um, and then we also got a original character for this series, the um, Conquador, that dude right there, which is pretty cool. He was um, selling the burbles on the black market. We also got the Soul Sever, who had the Book of Omens, who was basically trying to recreate the dead. There's the duelist. And then let's move into the toys. So toys here in the States brought to us by Bandai. Um, some people think that why this the series was canceled was because the toy line sucked so bad. And I think that there's some truth to that. Um, I don't think Bandai did a really good job. Um, the figures that came out were a kind of a four inch scale. They're yeah. trying to mirror what they did with the Power Rangers. Um, articulation was there, but um, they just, I don't know, they just weren't as on par as they could have been. But later on, we did get into a more like six inch scale line, which we'll see a little bit later. But here's Lino. He comes with the, the Eye of Thundera, powered up, non powered up, comes with the shield, the claw shield. Um, we got Tigra, bullet whip gun. Was that the six inch Tigra? No, this is we're all we're looking at all the four inch. Four inches, okay. yeah. And then we'll get into the six inch later. Uh, Chitara, who for something you know for a, a character who's supposed to run, she had the shittiest articulation because um, you couldn't move her at the hips. You see, it's a swivel, so it just doesn't work. <laughs> No running pose, unless you're doing it from the knees. A uh, panthro. This is all wave one. Got Wiley Kit and Wiley Cat. So there's Wiley Cat. Wiley Kit coming with their surfboards, hoverboards, some type of board. Mumra, little bandage basket case. Mumra. a lot of articulation i was excited when this this wave came out until i finally realized damn it sucks um next wave was claudus so that was kind of cool we got a new mumra or the the powered up mumra mm, that could look better again four inch we have the new panther with his new mechanical arms and here are some of the same scale that was released um, in foreign markets. Uh, there's a Lion-O, there's a Mumra. You can see that there's not as much paint detail. Some people may think it's knockoffs, but they aren't. They're actually um, Bandai, you know, slash, you know, they had a different other distributor. So, but, all right. Uh, we also <laughs> had some deluxe figures. Lino here came with a kind of what is this thing? 
I don't even remember. I don't. Even, I didn't have this. Kind of like a um, action base. This. I remember seeing a review of this. It was quite hilarious <laughs> because his arm motion basically oh. simulated. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. Wow. <laughs> cool. Sword thrust. Up and down, up and up down. Up and down, yeah. Uh, Tiger had the same weapons accessory piece, but he had better articulation. Um, didn't have to use two hands. So, had a free hand. Uh, Groon was the, this is the only way to get Groon was in the deluxe, where he came with his power kind of staff type of um, Warhammer thing. And then you had the, um, I have this thing, Bumbra's deluxe version, where you could close his wings and have kind of like wrap around him like a cape. So notice the uh, the joints there. Yeah, I'm starting to remember now. Yeah, it nothing was hidden as far as the uh, pins and screws yeah. on these figures. They are in the actual pictures, nope. but in the actual toys, no. That was a sad thing. Uh, this is one that can command quite a bit of money. A lot of money, like 30 bucks. Uh, is the Panthro. Comes with the same base as Tigra and Lino. This was released towards the latter part of the um, series. So just picture it's no longer in your Target's Walmart. You're going to have to find it like at a, kind of like a Ross or Marshall type scenario. Um, it's got a spinning attack with his nunchuck. That was about it. Nothing good. And then you have the nice little action packs. I have Thundera pack here. You get four figures, Tigra, Mumra, Snarf, and lion This was a nice way to get Snarf. The only other way was to buy the Thunder Tank. All the other characters were released in single cards. And the card, I forgot. They're, they're all blister card. This was pretty cool. I never saw this. This is the ultimate figure pack. It's a four pack. You get the golden lino, which comes with the deluxe armored up um, suit, which we'll see in a little bit. You also get Mumra. You also get the invisible tiger that comes with the sword or with the Tower of Omens. And then again, you get Snarf. So uh, looking at Mumra's sword, uh, I may have missed it, but uh, he had the Eye of Thundera at one point, I guess. Or is that a different stone? Or it's a, uh, I think it was a different stone. Is he got a stone, the text stone, I think. Okay. That Pumira stole, and he put it into his um. I think he put it in his sword. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. No, he never did get. I don't think he ever got the Eye of Thundera. Now I gotta go back and rewatch it all. Um. All right, here's the Thunder Racers moving into the vehicles. Um, you did get a Lino figure. You did see this in the show. Uh, these Thunder Racers could attach to the Thunder Tank to make it a little bit bulkier and more you know, show accurate also. Um, but the, the Thunder Tank's a piece of shit. It doesn't compensate for the weight. But um, you had the nice effect, though, that you could um, hook these into the Thunder Tank and it would they're spring loaded, so it fires them out, which is kind of kind of cool. But you have um, Tiger here that has a Thunder Racer also. Um, lizard cannon, so you got a lizard. You never got a scythe, a slice, uh, sly, sly. Excuse me. Uh, but you you got a lizard though, which is kind of odd. I don't get it. Um, you got a tigress, tigress, tiger flyer. It's kind of a smaller rendition of the. The um, was the feliner. Here's the thunder tank. It does have electronics. You can see you can launch those things right there. Um, this was the original box. They decided since it wasn't selling, they would redo the box art. Which it's a piece of shit toy, but they decided let's redo the box art and then make it look like this, which looks a lot cooler. But it doesn't look anything like the picture. 
So I thought that was funny. So mm. there's two different yeah. versions you can get. Uh, Mumra Storm Charger. That was pretty cool. You got that. Light up little Mumra that's in there. Tower of Omens. That's the one that came with the uh, clear version of Tigra. It's there's nothing to it. It's I don't I wouldn't even classify it as a playset. I could make something better out of toilet rolls. <laughs> Ouch. Well, it's true. Um, it it's sad. <laughs> That's the thing. It, they didn't put enough love into the damn toys. I don't understand. They put a lot of love into the story, into the cartoon, which is great, but eh, gives a crap. This is what Nick was talking about: the armor of omens. This is the um, mech suit that Leo wore in Legacy. This is about a 12-inch toy. Light up eyes. Here's the 6-inch line now for you, Brian. Line oh, yeah. Lots of articulation and a lot of screws on the back. Oh, yeah. So, um, but... You can see Lino here can actually hold the sword with both hands. He comes with the cloth shield, whether it's um, opened up or in its kind of sheath mode. That way you can put the um, the dagger version of um, the Sword of Omens in. Yep. You got Chitara. They had a pretty cool gimmick for attaching that to his waist, too. It was like a peg oh, on peg. the side. Yep. It was kind of neat. And they did that with the classics line. Yep. Um, or the actual other classic, which I like the ball hinge. Yeah. In there, yeah, that was pretty cool. The eight inch, so then a six inch. Again, what was Bandai thinking? Classic Thundercats. We'll do an eight inch figure, Tiger and Lino. I think that's too big. Let's go six inch, with a screaming face Lino and a Mumra. Yep. Well, let's just call it good. <laughs> so we have Chitara here. Comes with a bow staff. Donatello would be proud. It's a good figure. It is. I liked it. Um, Except for the, uh, again, the screw holes on the shoulders. But at least she's a cheetah, so she has spots, I guess. Uh, sure. I don't think she does. <laughs> but yeah, no, these the six-inch line was nice. I, I do admit that. Uh, Panthro here was pretty cool. We didn't, unfortunately, get a Wily, kit, Wily Cat. Um, we did get a Mumra. And then the hardest one to find and the most expensive one to find is Tigra, which we did get. Um, and that was it. Yeah, That's the sixth that line. I think that Tigra was, I don't, I think it was an exclusive to like Target or Walmart or something. And <sighs> I seem to remember like they went on clearance at one point and then people finally realized they wanted it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. find it. Yeah, I never found it. I have all the rest of them, but not that tiger, but I'm not willing to go and hunt for it. If I was at a flea market and saw it, I'm like, oh, okay, fine. All right, so, so I, um, you know, when Maddie Collector failed to complete their line, right, I yeah. went hunting for at least a Chitara or something like that, right? Yeah. It turns out they don't scale at all, right, with the Maddie Collector Thundercats. Yeah. And uh, mm. I happened to find a lot of all four of these at a pretty good price, James. So, uh, oh, cool. When I find them, I'll let you know. Okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> um, I know it's a little late. I just saw your message, Jose. Um, I'm screen sharing. Would one of you fine gentlemen send the link to uh, Mr. Hork and BX? <laughs> all right, I got you. All right. Um, if if it's too late, then you know I, I apologize. I didn't see the message there till like thirty minutes later. Um, and if you guys wanted to be a Thundercat, you could get you know your claw shield, your um, sword of omens. You could get the nunchucks, um, and have at it. There's no whips though. That's weird and no no staff. But oh well. I bought the claw shield and the sword for my kid. Cool. Let me ask you this. Does does he know what it is? He knows what the Thundercats are? Yeah. Okay, I'm good. That's good. I'm just you never know. He's more he's he's more familiar with the classic stuff, the eighty four series. Oh nice. You've raised him right. I try. I try. 
Um, and this is a UK, I believe, exclusive or somewhere exclusive. You can get both of them together, the sword and the shield. Um, yeah, that's about it. I think, um, yeah, there you go. That's the Thundercats. Um, as I have here, it's a tombstone that says Thundercats. We barely knew ye, the fans, rip 2011 to 2012 because you only lasted about a year. Um, again, mm. great series, great as far as cartoon, really Speaking piss poor toy line. Mm -hmm. Speaking of cartoons, were there any cartoons out today that look as good as that did? I'm sure there is a couple out there. Mm -hmm. um, as, as, as far as U.S. base, I'm sure there is. Um, but, I mean, do you guys agree with me that it's probably one of the best, like, yeah. retakes on a property yeah. done really well? Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd say it's in the top three, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Because I'd, I'd, I'd say this, uh, the 2000X He-Man and G.I. Joe Resolute. Yeah, G.I. Joe Resolute. I forgot. Yeah, the 2002 He-Man was really good. Uh, Again, cut short because of toy sales and just marketing. Well, it, don't you think it's funny that both of these series were Cartoon Network series and failed? Yep. Uh, I do. Kind of a coinky dink. Um, but again, do you think it was the, the okay. series? The, can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The screen just went blank. All right, there it is. <laughs> She's walking on the keyboard. Um, but uh, Flash Kitty. Uh, I mean, was it the toys that did it under? I mean, I don't think they gave it enough time, like you said, Jamie. Right? It was uh, no, they uh, didn't. No. Um, no. what's up, Jose? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. What's up? Sorry, it took what's me so up, long. Bro? Uh, it was, I need All right, no problem. <laughs> Are you talking? <laughs> As from the past, I've enjoyed that oh, <laughs> series. I've always, I've always meant to check it out, and um, just never really got the chance. Mm. And, um, and um, you said I the story it. lines are a little bit more mature. I, I know, <laughs> but you were like, oh, the, that female character, and you were like, oh, she's a traitor. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, damn. Um, it's cool. By the time I get to it, I probably won't even remember, and I'll still be surprised. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still worth a watch. I mean, it's. I know it's it's fairly not. I mean, it's fairly recent. It's 2011, but um, again, I think it's one of the. It's a really good series. If you're a Thundercats fan, you should check it out. Um, it it didn't get it a much, like we said, it it needed more. At least with the 2002 yeah. series, we kind of got a little bit of closure because they did some fiction for it. Um, especially if you if you got the box set, it came. One of them came with a comic book that um, showed, you know, the resulting effect of Man and Arms becoming part of the Snake Men. You know that yeah. type of stuff. It would have been great. Um, sorry, Jose. A little bit more spoiler here, but um, <laughs> they only get the three stones. They they still have another stone, and at the very end, it was like they they got all the all the different animals to kind of unite. And then it was just kind of like, okay, done. It's like Lionel's was like, okay, we got to keep going. And that was the end of the episode. And it's like, that's the end of the series. And you're like, the fuck. Yeah. So did, laugh. It give, it, it, did it give that impression so that there was supposed to be more than, and maybe just it tanked maybe because of the toy sales, maybe toys didn't yeah. do well and it just didn't continue. Yeah. It was yeah. supposed yeah. to keep going. Um, they said that it was on hiatus for a little bit at, one of the that one at one of the cons, um, and they said that they're working to get it back. You know, just get going on it again. And then it was like a year later, and they said they finally just put the knife. You know, they just put the dagger in, like it's done. Uh, um, it, yeah. It's not coming back. And we're you know we're sorry, but yeah. <laughs> Don't. Be that sounds back. similar. That sounds similar to the um the Young Justice. After the second season, like it seemed like, man, we were primed for a third, and then you know nothing. They wound up canceling. Yeah, it's like, damn. We still have hope, though, right? There is a season three coming. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, Netflix. Yeah. Oh no, it's not Netflix anymore. Really? Oh, no. I think it's. I think own... it's supposed to be their own exclusive, like app. Yeah, uh, their own streaming right. service. Which again, who knows? 
Uh, Yo, laugh at me if you want, but I got teary as hell <laughs> at that fucking um, episode with the tree people that live only for a day. Oh, the pit, the petlers. Yeah, man, yeah. that shit made me emotional. Got me all in my <laughs> feels. Well, it was cool to see Emrick. He was like a very talkative youngster. Like, hey, who are you guys? Hey, does that sort? What, what do you do this? What do you do that? And he just went shut the hell up. And then all mm-hmm. of a sudden, he he you know, got older, like with like only yeah. like an hour that passed by. And then he got older again. And he became a teenager. He's like, "You don't need to tell me what to do, Lionel. I'm doing this and that and all yeah. this kind of crap." Then he got older again, and he's being more like thoughtful, and he's a little wiser. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it was a good, it was a good episode. A lot of the stuff that we got to see was like, "Wow, this is." They built a really fantastic world. World, yeah, yeah. Those elephant monks were cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, complacent, <laughs> but cool. Yeah, we're looking for this. Yeah, okay, whatever. You know where it is? Yeah, we think we know where it is. What are you here for again? <laughs> like, oh my god. Yeah. The um what was the episode? I think it was Wiley Kit. She had to play a song on her little circle flute thing. Was that with the elephant people? I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. yeah. That seemed like an interesting take. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that episode was funny. When they when they met him, she's she's playing that and I think Annette or one of the um the elephants came up to her like, wow. That's a sad song. And she's like dancing to it. <laughs> so I was like, well, my mom used to play it as a lullaby. Like, oh, okay. Like, let go. Um, yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. Um, the toys, unfortunately, bombed. Whoa. I think the only thing that could have helped is if Maddie Collector could have continued with the classics line and given, a, given us all the classic, but did what they did with the, the Master of the Universe and kind of filtered in a couple of the the 2011 kind of characters yeah, or yeah. looking characters you know i think that would have worked out really well mm-hmm. i would have bought a thunder tank i fuck i'd buy a cat's lair i don't care if it's 400 bucks fuck it hmm. but yeah. for a six inch line i mean castle gray school is amazing for masses universe and yeah. we'll yeah. never get a snake mountain now i mean that super seven said so they're not doing it um no i don't there hasn't been any talk about it at all. There was rumors when Maddie had it and they looked at it and they were like, okay, we need to change it up because it was going to be Bluetooth enabled. So you could, you know, do the whole voice stuff like you do with the original. Oh, but wow. it was it wasn't cost effective. So they're like, okay, let's maybe we can read do this somehow. And then they lost it. You know, they they decided not to do it. Super Seven hasn't talked about anything. They're just concentrating on the filmation stuff. And they're they're shitty on their distribution. Um, yeah, you thought Maddie was bad trying to get this stuff out. Super Seven yeah. is like Super Seven years. I mean, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> well, it's it's funny. The Four Horsemen are at the show today, the the convention, and they had some prototypes out, like Tilo's out, Man in Arms, and people are like, is that out yet? Wait, did I pay for that yet? Wait, am I waiting for this still? I don't remember. <laughs> I would love to ask them how they feel about what's going on. Do they like the subscription thing where you have to be all in? You have to buy all the figures from Super 7. You can't cherry pick it. And do they mm-hmm. like the delays and or whatever it's going on? Because um, they're a good company. It's just yeah. Super 7. It's like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, they had so much cool stuff there. And I was like, it's like you guys made the Thundercats, didn't you? And like, yeah. And I was like, uh, what do you got under the table there? You got anything? You got you got a tiger down there? You got Chitar? Anything? <laughs> Chitar. Like, no. <laughs> no. Oh, man, I would be like, if they did like like this, like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> there's Jaga, and then there's Groon that was supposed yeah. to be the whole damn series. Yeah. Like, you mean these? <laughs> like, <laughs> son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah I don't know what the fuck is wrong with them for not releasing the Groon and the Jaga. I mean that was the whole that was basically the whole reason I wanted the series in the first place. They were trying to be cost effective to the customer with not letting us have to be doubled up because they wanted that out in like six months because they lost the license. They wanted to get rid of that shit. And it just they're like, you know, let's get rid of those two. Get them out of there. Well, what I'm saying is they have the prototypes. Yeah, they did. I mean, they had a lot of stuff. So, I mean, fucking sell it. It's the same thing with Snake Mountain. It, we've yeah. seen it. 
at all the cons. We saw it. We saw how big it is and how just fucking gorgeous it looks, but it's like, nope. Well, in one of the Super 7 podcasts, they said that they were looking at seeing what they could do to make it cost effective, but that was months ago, and they haven't said anything since. I don't trust them. Yeah. And, like, they said, they also said um, that Thundercats, Super 7 said Thundercats are dead because they couldn't get the license from Maddie. And the way that they said it, they they were basically intimating that there's some kind of reboot coming. So that's why they couldn't get the rights. Oh, they oh. can't blame Maddie on that. Because then why would Maddie not do it? Yeah. yeah, I have no idea. But that's what they were saying. Yeah. James, I don't know if it was your show or somewhere else, but aren't there, like, Listen, there a complete set of like Thundercat, uh, like articulated, super deformed figs that just got like announced or something. I was like, how come they? How can they like make these? And not yeah. make the. <sighs> I don't get it. I don't. I, I don't know. Well, who knows? But um, hopefully, y'all enjoyed the blast of power. I don't know what you guys want to talk about. Something else. We still got twenty viewers. I don't know how long we've we been doing this. Uh, psh, two hours. You know my benchmarks three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah benchmark between three to six you know just whatever no it's, um, i don't know um yeah i don't know i don't know what's um so okay um, let's let me ask you this how do you, do you think the thundercats should come back and in, in, in what format i think um think? Animation, like just yeah. you can come back in animation, just modern the modern animation now, and, and maybe just a more mature storyline, you know, made for you know those older teens, you know, aimed for us adults that would still watch it, you know. But of course, you know, it's got to kind of be marketed towards the kids, but marketed towards younger young adults, young teenagers, you know, and and give them more mature storylines, which we seem to get in some of these shows nowadays. So. And make good action figures so the series can continue. Because I think that's usually that's usually what's the point like of the the shows, right? It's just to drive the merchandise, you know. So to put out good merchandise, and you know, hopefully you could have something. But you have to tell those good stories. I want a live action movie, like like Avatar live action or like live action like Dread no, like G.I. Fu- Joe. <laughs> Like Transformers, GI Joe, fucking paint these fucking paint these people up like cats and fucking yeah. let's do this shit. Film it in Go Tunisia. Get the cast from Cats, the musical. Put them on the big screen. Give them nah, a like, like probably like ten years ago, I think Wizard did like a Photoshop of like Brad Pitt as Lionel from Tro- yeah. like when he was in Troy. Wasn't there supposed to be like a live action movie like on tap though? I thought I heard something. Like there yeah. was talk of it. I do remember that. I didn't know that. I know there's a Masters of the Universe someday. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no man. I want fantasy movies to come back. Like that Dark that'd Crystal. be dope. Yeah, yeah Dark but, Crystal, fucking Conan, yeah. like a good like, Conan. Yeah. Do you think if they were to do like a movie? Like, do we have to go through origin and all that stuff? I mean, why not just jump in, like, with these characters, like, and maybe have a somehow tell, you know, what you the origin do. or what they're about somehow, like, real quick or something, like, in there. But just you basically do, have them go on an adventure to, you know, do something. You yeah. could do a crawler, like, during the fucking opening credits. Yeah. Just make yeah. like the opening credit. Just make the opening credits the fucking ship crash landing on Third Earth, and as it's crashing, they like do like text explaining the Thundercats are, fle- yeah, are it's, it's fleeing a doomed planet. Shot down by like Mumra yeah. ship, and then we see the crawler, yeah. and it's just yeah. like off of a seventies movie. Fuck yeah! <laughs> no, but, well, okay, well then, <laughs> instead of doing an origins, would you rather have them continue the story from 2011? And I was gonna really say that. Yeah, I would love to see what, how that's gonna happen. You know, that series to me it kind of drug on a little bit, maybe just because I was getting a little impatient because they got to find the stones, like then they got to find the tower, and then once they get to the tower, they're not sure what to do. It felt like they Lord were the in the middle of doing. It felt like like they were in the middle of playing a Legend of Zelda game, but I didn't have the controller in my hand. <laughs> so, and they're just in the forest going back and forth. Back and forth. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> yeah. That's true. Um, but shit, you like going back to saying live action, like you see all these fucking superhero mo- movies. You know, mm-hmm. they have the effects to do it. Yeah, yeah, but that's like a modern take of like they're I mean they're not in like besides oh I guess some of them are, but like they're not in the spandex like the comics. They're in a more modern like tech, you know, or tactical suits. I don't think uh, you can do that with cats. Yeah. Well, you got to I mean, showcase their, you know, the tail, ears, you know, there's a little more. I think they'd have to go the avatar route mm. and do it like, not CG. like, but like all CG. I mean, it, it's going to cost a shit ton of money. But, mm. I mean, um, well, well, even the 2011, I mean, these, the, the Thundercats, they were furry. I mean, you could see uh, them, you know. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't trust the movie studio to, to do that franchise justice. You know, like I could just got the feeling that the love wouldn't be put into it. You know? Yeah. No, I don't look at Transformers. No. You can go either way, whether it's good or bad, but um, that that put the that set the tone for anything for me that's coming like oh, okay, G.I. Joe. Oh, <laughs> yeah, great. Oh, like a, like an '80s licensed property, yeah, like yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's based off of a toy. Yeah, it's still like the video game, like Curse. Like, have we got gotten like a really good video game movie that can be considered like good? Good. You know? They're usually considered flops, most of them. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Um. Okay. Let's we'll see. Well. See, Wildstorm has the property. Wildstorm is owned by who? DC. 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 Yeah. DC yeah, tried they just to did, reboot. Dude, they just did Thundercats versus Masters of the Universe. The universe. Yeah. It was dope. It, it was really based dope. Off the old school. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Huh. Damn, I wish yeah, they would. I if they could continue the story, then we could flesh out Tiger Sharks and Silverhawks. And if C Dub yeah. can do it. Their shit. I can't. Cartoon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Come on. The dub <laughs> C-Dub will fucking tackle anything. <laughs> but it just spawns out to like Arrow, just like, okay, we got Flash, came out of that. Mount of Flash, got DC Legends. It's like, damn, we could have Thundercats that we got out of that. You know, Silverhawks out of that. We got, you know, Tiger Sharks. <laughs> like, cool. But, oh well. Okay. Well, I guess that's... Okay, put, uh, put it on HBO and have the Game of Thrones dudes do it. <laughs> I don't want to see no feline... Um, incest. <laughs> or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Tiger's just like right there, like, yeah. So, <laughs> that's what it would be, too. You know or, they'd be throwing that in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to or Panthro or something. like. Oh, but, dude, that would actually be dope. Jamie Lannister as Tigra. Okay. God forbid that, that, that Cinemax that. options that you know. I just, I just, I just, I just meant the actor weird shit. <laughs> I just meant the actor Nickelodeon, whatever his name is. All right, well, Nick just turned a nice property into something that I can't. <laughs> Dude, I didn't say Axel Braun should do it. Shit. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note. Um, <laughs> I guess we'll get into our outros. We'll talk afterwards. Um, and um, yeah, if you want the link, hit me up. Hit someone up. Hit something, and uh, we'll get you in here. But it's gonna, we'll talk. I don't know how long we'll talk. Whatever. But um, cool. All right, Brink Mites. Brink Mites. <laughs> uh, I am Brink Mites in the Facebook groups. No, uh, Brian Brink in the Facebook groups and uh, at Brinkalizer on Instagram. And Hurricane at BX. What's up, guys? Hurricane BX all over social media. And uh, please check out the ROC Hangouts every single Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Realm of Collectors YouTube channel. Cool, cool. Awesome. Thanks for having me on last week, too. That was fun. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. You're welcome anytime. Nick, Masterpiece. What's up? Green Man. What's up? Find me at Nick Brammer on Facebook. Uh, masterpiece underscore shit piece on Instagram. <laughs> I love it. And you can find me at 
Filter at FarmersOnly.com. Farmers. <laughs> nice. Trent's? From Trent's Bob, Twitter, Inst- Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Nice. All right. You can find me on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook, Victory Saber 77. Don't forget uh, the Cool Table Network. Um, go check out all the shows, Enter the Realm, ROC Hangout, uh, Big a Banging. Oh, man, I got to go through all this stuff. I should have put another picture at the end. Um, <laughs> Nerd Rage, Toy Detox, uh, Shattercast Uncut, um, the new Lego show on Bricks and the Dollars, YouTube building channel. Building up to it. Yep, building up to it. Um, information Creep. Eight weeks. Um, and just support the Cool Table Network. Just check out the shows, like, subscribe, um, five-star ratings, all that type of stuff. Don't forget to um, pre-order your hoodie, whether it's a zip-up, pullover, or both. You can get them at uh, the Realm of Collectors webpage at www.realmofcollectors.com. $55 shipped. And there's other merchandise there also. Um, you have until Friday of next week, which is November 17th, to lock in your pre-order. After that, you will never see them again. And we move yeah. on to the next thing. And you'll freeze. You'll freeze. And you will not be cool. <laughs> so buy it um, and all the other merchandise. And um, that's about it. Yeah, cool. Still on the air? Night, guys. Yeah, we're still on the air. What's up? Yeah. We're gonna hang out. <laughs> Dust is going to bed, he said. Oh, well. Oh. Aww. <laughs> yeah, he was out. killing, man. He was killing some more younglings. He's killing younglings. <laughs> 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 He's killing younglings. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said winglings. Oh, this is the first time I had liquor in a bit. I killed a mason jar of cranberry and vodka. Nice. Oh, yeah. Cool. What did I have? I had rum. Nice. That was it. Everybody's sipping on something tonight. I like that. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it.